should be live. Tweet that out. We're going to be doing some Demon Souls. Uh, soul level one guide walkthrough kind of dealy. Where I'll be going through everything very uh, specifically. Explaining everything I'm doing. And this will be intended for people who have like never really done a lot of soul level one. You know, obviously... If you're doing a soul level one, you should have beaten the game multiple times, so I'm not going to explain like just how to play the game. It's going to be the assumption that you've beaten Demon Souls at least a few times before, at least probably two or three times, and you're ready to do a challenge. And uh, yeah, I'll go over all the basics of soul level one in this in this game once we get through these these uh, intro segments. Okay, so we're going to make a new character, obviously. We're not going to go online. That's actually very important. Uh, if, if you're going to do Soul Level 1, I, I highly recommend not going online. And the reason why is because the online aspect of Demon Souls can actually affect single player mechanics, even when you're playing without any multiplayer. And if you're doing a challenge run, you shouldn't, you're not supposed to use multiplayer anyway, because what's the point of doing a challenge if you summon other players? So play offline if you're doing a challenge in Demon Souls. So we made a um, royalty, which I'll show in just one second. Got it. I gotta have my fashion. Let's look good. Okay, so so you have to pick royalty in Demon Souls because it's the only Soul Level One character. So it's your Soul Level One character. You know, and all these other classes, as you can see in the bottom right there, have a different, a higher level. So royalty is our starting class. Now the royalty is actually a pretty good. Oh, what's up, Neo? Yep, I'm going to be going through explaining everything about a Soul Level One playthrough. In detail so right here we have to pick the royal our soul level one class so the soul level one class in demon souls is actually quite good you have a decent amount of magic and faith which actually lets you use spells quite effectively the main problem is you have low vitality and endurance but that's actually not as bad as it might seem in demon souls and we also have 12 dexterity in nine strength which isn't high but you can two-hand things so you actually can use quite a bit of stuff so now let's start the game now that we kind of know what our character is capable of. And um, I'm going to skip the tutorial because there's really no point in doing it. There's nothing really in the tutorial that you actually need and can't get very quickly later. You can do it if you want, but it's not. There's really no real reason to do it. And welcome back, Neil. Glad to see you here. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So we're going to be going into 1-1, and there's only a few things in 1-1 that we really need, but they're important items. They're very important. Uh, we want, we have to get the Thief Ring and the Kling Ring. Those two things are very important. So those are our first objectives, Kling Ring, Thief Ring. And also, um, picking up Fire Bombs and Turpentine is a good idea, because they will help a lot for the first boss, Phalanx. But that's pretty typical of like any character, but specifically... We absolutely need to get the Kling Ring and the Thief Ring. They're very good items. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Other than that, there's nothing really that important that we need to go over at this level. Because this level, you know, if you pick a royalty, which a lot of people do, it's no different than a normal playthrough. Because you can't level up until you beat this level anyway. But there are a few things that you could do. Another thing, this guide that I'm doing right now, this is only for regular game. I'm not going to be doing anything to prepare for New Game Plus. I might do a separate, a different guide for that where we prepare for New Game Plus. Right now, we're just trying to beat the game. That's our only real goal. So right now, we're only going to have our Half Moon Grass equipped and Crescent Grass. We'll save the Better Grass for later. Not that it really matters. Because you'll be able to buy grass by the million fold. And I get hit by the very first enemy in the game. Excellent. So yeah, these guys, nothing to worry about. And we'll just take him out. Only reason I'm killing these guys is because later on... Actually, it might not even matter. But yeah, when you're uh, coming... You have to come back here to fight the boss. You might want these enemies cleared out. Again, it's not that big a deal, but something you could do. 
You can run past them, obviously. Ow. Ow. Man, I'm bad at video games. But yeah, even at level 1, you can get hit a lot. It's not that big a deal. You can take hits. You can, you can take quite a few hits. Parry. And another thing, um, let's say you're having trouble, like, at this part, which I would hope not, because if you've beaten the game before, this is pretty easy stuff, but the thing to remember is, even at level 1, you have magic, so, like, I'm actually going to put my catalyst in my other hand. You know, you could just abuse Soul Ray if you, uh, Soul Arrow if you want. Like, it just one-shots these guys. So, you have options even at level 1, so it's not too hard. And you can do that for most of the game. Very, most enemies don't really have good defense to magic in this game, as I just get hit like a million times. And we're going to take this grass. And the ambush in here. Not much of an ambush. Getting attacked from behind. And I just, yeah, it just hit me a lot. It's cool. That's fine. And, yep. So the imp an important item to get here, there is fire bombs here, which we do want. Because fire bombs are going to help a lot for Phalanx. So that's pretty much the only time in the game we're going to need them. But they do make that quite a bit easier. So we're going to snag those. But we're not going to use them for a while. We can just kind of run around these guys. Backstab. But yeah, there's really not much going on in this level. So, ooh, a free firebomb. Not really much going on in this level specifically. We just need to get the Thief Ring, Cling Ring. Those are our main objectives. We don't really care about much else. If I could kill this guy. And the thing is now, we won't be using this weapon for very long. Because right now, as you can see, we have the... The rapier, it's kind of bad. It's got a, it doesn't do a lot of damage. Doesn't do, it doesn't have a very good move set. It it does have bonus critical, like it does more damage with repost and uh, backstabs, which is nice. But other than that, it's not a very good weapon. But we'll re we'll be replacing that soon, so nothing to worry about there. Oh, 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 sad death. All right, so we're almost to the shortcut segment of the level, so that's important. And this guy won't attack me for some reason. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> so that could have been a death in a different location. Okay, so up here... There is a boulder trap, which will activate. Nothing really going on there. Pretty simple. And there's some grass over here that we want. And now we'll be heading to the shortcut segment of the level. Which, yeah, if you're doing your first challenge, uh, definitely a thing to prioritize is getting all the shortcuts. Because that's going to make the game a lot easier. So know where the shortcuts are. Know how to get to them. You just parry him. So, head this way. Now there's fire bombs in here, which we're going to want for the boss. And we can have these dreglings kill themselves for us. Demon Soul suicide mechanic. Alright, so down here, actually, after we get past this guy. It's important to hit these chains because there is items from that we're going to want. So we're going to hit these. They drop items down. Now, we're going to use Soul Arrow for this segment. Why? Because down here, there's a bunch of guys and there's explosion, uh, explosive barrels. So if you go down there in melee, there is a risk that you could die. We can just avoid all that with a Soul Arrow. Because Soul Arrow is OP. And there you go. Snag this. Turpentine, that'll be coming in handy. 
and the shortcut is now unlocked. So now if we die, we have progress. So that's always good. Now here's the cling ring. We're going to be wearing this for a lot of the game, so it's good that we have this. Put that right here. Don't want that serpentine yet. And there's also an old spice here, which we're going to want later, and the jade hair ornament, which will be helpful for getting another ring in the nexus after we beat this level. So we want all those items. So now we'll be going back to the main part of the segment of the level. But now that we have the cling ring on, we have more life, so we'll heal up. We're much less likely to die now, so that's always good. And now the next thing we need to do is get the thief ring. And we'll have the main things from this level that we absolutely need. There is a cling ring, uh, another thief ring in the game. Uh, not a cling ring, another thief ring in the game, but it's good to get it here as soon as possible. So there's a Strava down there. You can actually climb in this game like that by holding up and sprinting at certain ledges. We'll pick up the thief ring and put that on. Thief ring is super good in, the, in this game. It makes your aggro range less, which makes the levels much easier. You're pretty much be wearing that the whole game. Now we're only killing this, these dragons this way just because it's easier. It's not necessary. And we don't really care about saving Estrava. We're just going to leave him here. We don't really care. Actually, I'm not even going to talk to him because it's not necessary. If this was a new game, if we were going, if we were worried about new game plus, we'd deal with a Strava, but we're not. Kill this guy through the door, and kill this guy. So there's a scimitar over there, which we're gonna use for the rest of this level, just because it has slightly more damage than the rapier. We're not gonna be using it for long, but for now, it's quite good. A little bit more attack rating, as you can see there. And we're gonna get ambushed and die. That's that's good. And I miss my repose. That's excellent. All right, cool. Dying is fun. Could just run past this guy, but I'm being stupid. All right. Excellent. All right, we want that grass. And we'll continue. So for the rest of the level, the only other pickup we need is Terp. The rest of the... There's another Turpentine drop after the last shortcut. That's the only other item we really need. So we're just going to take out these draglings. Watch out for the leaping attack. All right, fantastic. All right, not too hard. Pretty easy. And this guy's coming up behind me, but I don't care. Just two-handing do a little bit more damage. Not that it really matters that much, but why not? Get the parry. Now, here another thing I should mention. Like, if you're doing, like, Soul Level 1 for the first time, you've only beaten the game a few times, you don't need to parry. If you're having trouble with those enemies, a thing you could do is just strafe around them with your shield up most of the time, and that will get the job done. So, like, if you're not good at parrying, it doesn't really matter. Secret dagger cooked on the bone. Exactly, Taryn. And yes, we will be getting the secret dagger soon. Because the secret dagger is an amazing soul level 1 option. We're going to be getting like three different soul level 1 weapons. They all are pretty good. But yeah, the secret dagger is probably the best one. In fact, it is the best one. And we got bolts that we don't care about. Cooked on the bone. So we're going to take these guys out just because they'll make it... Because we do have to worry about the dragon segment coming up as I get hit by a fireball. Yeah, these guys can be kind of annoying. Strafing around them is effective. Okay. So this next, this next part can be kind of tricky. Ooh, more grass. Because the dragon. So we're, we're going to play this safe because we're trying... This is a guide. We're not just... This is not a speed run. So we'll just pick this guy off easily from a distance pick this guy off and the reason why is because these guys can chase you across the bridge before they get killed by the dragon where the, these archers will get taken out for you so we're just kind of stalling until that happens all right and there's the dragon so now we gotta get oh i got a hellbird drop that's pretty good so now we gotta get the hell out of here and then wait for the dragon i wonder if another eight years from now he'll discover the new goat weapon maybe you never know and the hellbird cannot be used at level one nope 
The winged spear can, but the halberd cannot. So we'll go back to our scimitar. All right, we're just gonna wait for the dragon to, to peace out. If he would, it'd be fantastic. All right, so the dragon's gone. So now let's try to get across this bridge. Again, we'll just pick off these guys from a distance. Easy peasy. Look at that damage. We're almost out of MP, but that's fine. We do have Old Spice if we wanted to get more. And we also have the Fragrant Ring, which recovers MP. So it wouldn't even be that big a deal if we ran out. Alright, there we go. So the level is now effectively beaten because this switch activates the boss room at the start of the level. So now if we die, it doesn't even really matter. The only other thing we really want is the turpentine that is over here. Once we have this, we could die and it would... It actually would save us time, really. Because we have everything we need now. So now we're just basically heading to the boss. And from there, after this level is the real... The real soul level 1 stuff will begin. Basically, I'm rushing through now because a death really doesn't matter. We can die, and it would basically just put us at the boss. So it's, it doesn't really matter either way at this point. So it might look what I did might look fancy, but it doesn't even matter. Like, I could have literally just run off the cliff and killed myself. Wouldn't really have changed anything. All right, so now that we're ready to go, we're going to only have Half Moon. We'll have Fire Bombs, and we'll have Turpentine. So what we're going to do is we're going to rain down fire bombs from a distance and we're basically just going to throw all of them. From right around, a few steps forward, then aim your can your camera up and start throwing. I'm going to throw about three. I'm going to aim my camera down some more. And that should about do it. Now we're just going to throw a few more, a few more pot shots and the boss will basically be done. Fire bombs destroy phalanx. As you can see. Ow. Good old fire bombs. This is pretty much the only time in the game we're going to use them, so don't worry about using them all. As long as you don't die, basically. But if this, you know, even uh, even if this is your first time doing soul level one, it's it's phalanx. You shouldn't have too much trouble. We'll heal up before we go in with our turpentine. And yeah, that's pretty much the boss. Not too bad. If I could hit him, that'd be nice. And there we go. So now the real challenge would begin. And while I'm here... Okay, none of them dropped any hard zone or sharp zone to that side. Yeah, pretty free when you aren't at 1 HP, right? Yep. So now we have his soul, which we don't really care about too much. Now we're going to go to the Nexus. So we... And unable to run. Yeah, that is true. That was a fun challenge. So now, we have to talk to the Monumental, the guy on our loading screen, before we can advance the game. Pretty typical stuff. Everybody should know that. So we'll talk to the Monumental, and then we'll get this challenge actually started. So, get this out of the way. And after I've talked to the Monumental, there's a few, a few Soul Level 1 things I'll go over that are pretty important for the challenge and the run. Some quote-unquote glitches that we're going to use, but I'll explain why. And why I don't really mind if people use them. And then a few system mechanics, world tendency, character tendency, our character and what they're capable of, all that good stuff. We'll go over some mechanics. We have other... Alright, so we'll get through this cutscene. Now he'll ask this question here. This doesn't really matter, but if you want if you are doing the pure white character tendency side quest, say yes. But it really doesn't matter for what we're doing right now. We're not worried about New Game Plus right now. We're just trying to beat the game at Soul Level 1. That's our only real objective. Alright, so we're going to drop down here. There's some new moon grass over here, which we're going to grab. Again, not super important, but it is nice to have. Drop down here. There's some Emperor Lies up there too, but we don't need them yet. So I'm not too concerned about it. Okay, so. Unequip all our stuff for now. Most of our stuff. So... First off, world tendency in this game. The reason why we're offline is also because of world tendency, because being online can affect certain things. When you die in a level in body form, the world gets closer to black tendency, which makes the game harder. 
which we don't want, obviously. And at soul level 1, you typically can even do more damage based on your character tendency. Having pure white character tendency, you get a 20% damage boost in soul form. So what that means is, if you're doing a soul level 1 challenge, you want to get used to playing in soul form most of the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill ourselves. But since we're in the Nexus, we're only affecting the world tendency of the Nexus, which doesn't really matter. We don't want to affect we don't want to negatively affect the world tendency of any of the actual worlds. So we'll kill ourselves now. This is a way to basically control your world tendency. We're gonna keep all, we're gonna make all the worlds pure white, which will make things easier for us. So next thing I'll do is I will grab my souls back, because we might need to buy some things. So now on the topic of glitches, most notably duping, dupe glitch. So when I first did Soul Level 1, like way back in the day, I didn't use the dupe glitch because I didn't want to cheat. But I will tell you from personal experience, the dupe glitch doesn't really make the game any easier. It just saves time, mostly. So I don't care if you use it, and for the sake of the stream, I'm not going to spend hours farming, you know, while I'm trying to explain things. So I'm going to use the dupe glitch, and I'll explain how to do it because I don't really care if people use it. It's not really that big a deal. So the first thing you do is you put an actual binding on your hotbar like that. And also make sure the thing you're duping is not in your storage. Like as you can see, there's no materials in here. And actually I should hit take item. There's nothing in my storage. You can't dupe something if it's in your storage. So what we're gonna do is talk to the blacksmith, hit buy, select Crescent Moon Grass. While this menu is up, walk away until it automatically cancels the menu. Skip through his dialogue, press square to use your nextual binding. On this menu, hit start to cancel that menu, talk to Stocktile Thomas, and then deposit all the items you wish to dupe. So for right now, I'm going to select uh, New Moon Grass, and then immediately cancel out after you've done that. Now, if you've done it right, go to Thomas, take item. See, we have a shit ton of New Moon Grass there. Take them. We did it correctly. So now, we essentially have infinite healing. Now, I know what someone's saying. This is ridiculous. How can you say you're doing a challenge with infinite healing? Well, here's the thing. Even if you're playing the game totally casually, you can get infinite grass, and it's not very hard. There's a ton of ways to do it. You can basically just buy them en masse from patches like after doing like two levels. You can just farm the level we just did to get grass. It's really not as big a deal as you think to having infinite grass. Trust me. Same thing with spice. Same thing with arrows. Even souls to a lesser extent. But since we're doing soul level 1, having infinite souls wouldn't help us anyway. But yeah, so on soul level 1, I don't mind if you do this. So, I'm going to dupe some other things, just so we don't even have to worry about it. Like, for example, I'm going to dupe turpentine, because we might want that later. So we'll do the same method. Turpentine. And for now, that should be all we... Actually, just in case, we get some old spice too. And then we'll be good to go. And then we'll go over our next few objectives that we're going to try to achieve. And while we're here, another thing to keep in mind is always deposit things you don't need. We don't need the, the other grass right now, so we'll get rid of it. Because we don't want to overburden ourselves. We also don't need Mailbreaker, Rapier, Halberd, or the Scimitar for that matter. We don't need the Bolts. We don't need that other armor set. And we don't need the Fragrant Ring. Okay. So, take the actual binding off there. We will take those Old Spice and Turpentine. And another thing we want to do is go to Stockpile Thomas. Talk to him until you exhaust all his dialogue. Alright, all his dialogue is exhausted. Leave and talk to him again. Now the reason we're doing this is because we got that jade hair ornament. Say yes, he will give us this ring that we're going to hold on to. That ring allows you to carry more stuff, which is good at soul level 1, because soul, uh, your item burden is, is tied to your vitality, which we have very low of and we can't raise it. So having that ring as a backup is a good idea. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to world 4, and here's why. World 4 has an easy boss that you can do very quickly, and it has a very good starting weapon. So it's a good level to do at the start of the game. 
we're also going to put our old spice here. And you might be wondering why I have no weapon equipped. That's because the skeletons at the start of this world are very weak to blunt. So we'll actually do more damage barehanded than with the scimitar we had. And we're very quickly going to get our starting weapon of the game. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do 4-1. So our main, now our main objective is get the Crescent Felshin at the start of 4-1. Which is not too hard. There's only a couple skeletons, and that's about it. And I'll show how do you best deal with them. We, the reason, this is why the Thief Ring is really important. Because these skeletons are actually quite dangerous. But if you can keep them in a one-on-one -on -one fight, they're not so bad. So there's, right here, there's just this first one. The easiest way to deal with them is the Circle Strafe of the Shield Up. They have slow attacks like that that you can strafe out of the way of. And then we get the backstab while they're getting up, get some free hits in, and that's about it. Now, it gets trickier here because you have to be careful not to get the attention of multiple skeletons. So we're going to walk up just enough to get his attention and try to punish him. The fist is also quite fast, which makes this not so bad. You can get a lot of attacks in. So here, that one's an archer. He's not so bad. So we're just going to get this guy's attention, pull him back, get our backstab. I'm going to go for the swag ER2, even though you shouldn't do this because this move's terrible, but it worked. Okay, so he dropped something. Soul remains. That's what we want. Soul remains are very handy for later. So it's good that we have an extra one there, and he rolled off the cliff. But we don't want to accidentally use it, so we're going to take it off our hotbar. Now this is the trickier part, there's two of them right here, so you really want to be careful to only aggro one of them. If you aggro both of them, you're, just a, you're probably going to die, so let's make sure that doesn't happen. Oh, I got a backstab there, not bad. Okay, so one more, now we're pretty much clear, we just got to kill this last guy. Excellent. Now there's another very important item here that we're going to want, the Talisman of God, which is for casting miracles. And I will explain specifically why that's so important later. But for right now, just make sure to pick it up. And I'll show you that it's right over here. So we're going to snag this. Got that. Now we'll be free to continue through the level. There's an arrow trap here, but it's really nothing to worry about. If you just stay to the left like this, it won't hit you. See? And there's some soul remains here that we want. Now, we want that Crescent Felshin that's behind this guy. Get his attention. Kind of walk up to him. He'll do that leap attack, roll through it, and you're good to go. And if you're afraid of him, you can just go this way to avoid dealing with him. Equip our Crescent Felshin. Now we do pretty good damage. 169 AR. Um, that might seem really good, but the Crescent Felshin uh, split damage. So it, it's not as good as it appears, but it is very good. So now that we have this, we'll finish this level which is very easy to do. One more skeleton to deal with here. And I'm going to go for the parry. You don't have to do that, but I like to do it. Could just circle around him. Soul remains, that's awesome. Got another one of those. We'll probably dupe that anyway, but again, you can buy soul remains en masse writing after being this level legit, so don't feel so bad about it. If you want to do it legit, you can. You can farm the souls from like the Reaper in 4-2 and buy all your crap, but I've done that before and I don't feel like doing it again. I'm going to kill this gecko in case we want to upgrade the Crescent Felshin. And Shard of Dark Moonstone. And we're now ready to fight Adjudicator, who's a very easy boss. And same thing with him, wait for him to leap, roll past him. So we'll just heal up real quick. Oh, we also picked up the regenerator ring back there. I didn't mention it. It's not a huge thing. It's not that important, but it's worth having. So Adjudicator doesn't didn't load up quickly. That happens sometimes. So we're going to two-hand our weapon. We're going to hit this bloody spot with a sword sticking out of him. Whenever he attacks, we're just going to walk along with that sword that's in his belly. And by his hand. So attack, attack, walk with his sword. His attack will miss. Keep attacking. And that's basically the boss. Not too complicated. When he falls down, R1 mash on his weak spot, that's this bird. And that's pretty much the whole fight. 
The skellies are the real boss. Yeah, exactly. The skeletons are the real boss of this level. Not Adjudicator. And yeah, you can even tell when he's going to attack because the bird will make that noise. Make that tell. It'll be coming up in a second. Yep, right like that. So when that you hear that bird, Adjudicator's going to start his attack in like three seconds. And that's basically it. Unfortunately, it seems like we're going to have to three cycle him. Not that it really matters. Yeah, we'll just knock him down again. Watch out for the pillar like that. If that happens, you can like get stuck in it. If you get stuck in that pillar, you might not be able to get around his attack. That's the only thing you really got to watch out for. And yeah, it's pretty simple. Alright, so that's 4-1. Pretty easy so far. So now we're going to go back to the Nexus. Because now that we have this weapon, it will make uh, World 2 much easier. Because the enemies in World 2 are weak to magic, and this weapon does a lot of magic damage. So we'll be good on that. So that's where we're going to go next. And we're going to repair our stuff. Always remember to repair your stuff after you do a level. Just in case. You don't want your things to break midway through a level. And deposit anything you might have picked up that you don't need. Um, for now, I'll deposit the Blade Stone and the Shards of Dark Moonstone. I don't really need them right now. Um, and that should be it. Okay, so we are going to dupe those um, Soul Remains. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. Then, we'll take those out. And now we're going to kill ourselves to control our world tendency. And we will even have the soul remains there. Okay. So, time for suicide. Just like this. An amazing activity of suicide. And then we should be go good to go to world two. Now I I'll pick up my souls just because if you if you need them for anything I guess you can keep them but it really doesn't matter. You don't really need too many souls for the run. But now we're ready to go to world two. In world two, there's a few things we're looking for. We want to get shard of hard stone, shard of sharp stone, a large shard of hard stone, a large shard of sharp stone, and a chunk of each as well. Which might sound really difficult, but it's not too bad actually. It's pretty easy to get that stuff. But that's what we're going to try to do. There's a lot of upgrade materials that you can get, but we only need like specific ones. If my game would load. Thank you, Demon Souls. Alright, cool. So, right off the start, there's a gecko over here that we're going to kill. Because he drops upgrade materials, which we're looking for. R2 will knock him down. And there we go. So we already have sharp stone that we need, so that's good. And this guy sells hard stone and sharp stone, so we'll buy one of those. So we have the shard of sharp stone and the shard of hard stone. Now, over here, there is sticky white stuff, which we want. Take that. We'll use that later. I got hit by rocks. Fantastic. So we don't want to use that yet, though. Heal up. So here, I don't care about any of the guys in this room. Actually, I'm going to kill him just because he aggroed on me. And that, ow, and that could be a problem. Yeah, the Felshin that we're using right now and the Scimitar we had earlier has this attack. It's its unique push attack. This attack is actually terrible, and it can accidentally come out when you're trying to walk forward and attack. So that's always annoying. So we'll pick this guy off. Our Felshin, our Crescent Felshin does a ton of damage. So we can just take them out real quickly. Work our way around to this corner. And the reason we're doing that is because the dogs are going to come out. And we're going to try to ambush them. Kind of lure them into this area. We killed them in one hit, so it's not so bad. But yeah, they can kill you really quick, so... Try to, to fight them by themselves away from these guys. 
and that fat official is going to be shooting fireballs at us. All right, so here's the first guy that drops stuff. He didn't drop what we needed, but that's okay. So we actually need to kill this fat official. He's guarding items we want. Wait for the slow fireball, dodge it, hit him. Now once we're in here, we can circle around him, get the backstab, R2 on his wake up, and he's taken care of. Full moon grass, not bad, but this is what we want. That has a chunk of hard stone and a chunk of sharp stone. So now all we need is a large shard of hard stone and sharp stone, and we'll be good to go. Hit this guy through the wall. Excellent. Got ambush there. Not a big deal. And we're good to continue. So over here, the path to the shortcut switch. Well, it's not even really a shortcut, just to get further in the level. So we're not even going to bother with him. We're just going to drop down here and hit the switch. And now that we're down here, there's more bag uh, miners with the bags that have all the upgrade material that we're trying to get. So take him out. And he did not give us what we wanted. So we'll take this guy out. And he has the hard stone. Now we just need the large shard of sharp stone. And we should be good to go. So that's good. Wait, actually, I think there's one over here. Um, maybe not. Maybe I, there isn't. Nope. So we're looking for the miners. Ooh, secret item. Oh, Ed's grindstone. We don't really care about that. Could be good to have, but we don't really need it. So we still need that large shard of sharp stone. It doesn't look like we're going to get it yet. Oh, here's another guy with a bag. And there it is. Okay, so we have all the upgrade materials we need for now. So we'll continue through the level. So that went well. So the next thing we're going to try to do is basically unlock the shortcut and the blacksmith. They're one and the same. Because we're going to, we'll, we'll want the shortcut just in case we die. And having access to that blacksmith later will be helpful. Because there's certain upgrade paths that you can only do with him. So that's good. And there's another, there actually is another upgrade material here that we're going to snag real quick. And we'll even use, uh, actually we'll use magic for this to make it easier. We want that item over there, but these guys will ambush you if you go in there. So just kind of pick them off. Weaken them, lure them in. Those guys fall to their deaths. He sets himself up. And there we go. So now we should be able to get it without much difficulty. I'm just going to grab it and run. Yeah, he didn't hurt me too much. Okay, so shortcut is just over here. Excellent. Okay. Because, yeah, another thing is someone might, again, might be like, you just do, you're just you going to dupe all the materials, aren't you? But, again, you could just farm this level over and over again, which I don't feel like doing, and I don't think it proves anything skill-wise to do that. So I have no problem with someone duping after doing this level. Because you can pretty much, once you've done like gone through this whole level, you can farm it a lot. It's really not that big a deal. So we'll continue to the level. This guy's going to try to ambush us. So, ne oh, that was bad. Should have attacked him. So the next thing to do, this part coming up, the easiest way to get through here is to go to the right, roll through these barrels. There's basically a, a path on this roof that lets you skip all the enemies that are down there. You see there's like a bunch of enemies down there. I'm going to roll on this part and then drop down. Yeah, like all those guys there. Yeah, let's just avoid all that. In here, we're just going to run through this section. There's nothing here we want. And these guys are just kind of annoying to fight in these narrow passageways. But these dogs here are a little harder to run past. So we'll actually use the soul remains. Throw one behind them. And that will get them to turn around. And then we'll continue. And I almost sneezed. I'm sorry. Yeah, soul remains are very helpful to either run past or kill a distracted enemies. 
So it's always good. Now here, lure this guy out. The switch to effectively get the end of the level unlock is right over there. So I'm going to use a soul remains on him. And then just hit the switch because you're invincible while you're using it. And then hit this guy. So now we can go to the boss. Now if you want, you can you could even come back and fight this boss later with a, high, a more powerful weapon. But he's really not too hard and we'll fight him right now. But yeah, you could even leave the level right now, upgrade your stuff, and come back if you really felt like it. But there's really no need for that. So we will continue. And this uh, fat official down here, we're just going to let him destroy the barrels. Just so it's less of a chance we get killed by the explosion. And we'll just like roll through these ones while he's in his recovery. You can go over here for a safe spot and then come in and attack. Or just get hit by a fireball because you got too greedy. That's another thing that you could do. But yeah, he can't hit you right here. Yeah, you can literally stand here all day and he'll never hit you. So that's a thing. Now there's an Emperor Eyes here, which we might want, so we'll just snag it. Not really that important, but we do have it. Alright, so Armored Spider is a fun boss. And uh, for fighting him, we want the Thief Ring, because that actually does make him easier. And we don't want that, or that right now, so... Thief Ring actually does make him quite a bit easier, so we have that already equipped. Once you kind of learn his patterns, he's not too bad. Oh, cool, Xenoblade 2 arriving tomorrow. Cool thing, cool turn. Too broke for the special edition. So the main thing we're going to do with Armored Spider is kind of learn the pattern... This is going to be a good winner. Yeah, I think I think so, too. Since we have the Thief Ring on, when we approach him, he won't attack as soon as possible. But we are going to immediately start sprinting at him. And if he does that, wait for him to come down before rolling. And we can get a hit in there. He's always He likes to do a melee fireball like that, which I just got hit by. Watch out for that. Again, his tail, when it hits the ground, roll forward. You can roll into these pincing attacks. Basically, as soon as... He's kind of squat. They, the, the, the blades kind of come together. Always roll for that ground slam. It may not look like it should have hit you, but the hitbox is deceptively big. You can roll forward. Yeah, like as soon as those blades come together, you know he's going to come out with them. So his attacks are really not that hard to roll, uh, roll through. They all have tells. And for this, let's get the hell out of here. That is his uh, level sweeping attack gonna grind out Dragon Ball Fighters in Japanese and pretend it's for language practice. So yeah, for this attack, you can actually block that with certain shields, but not really on Soul Level 1. So now we have to repeat the process from before, and he did his web attack again, which where you wait for the tail to go down. There's the melee fireball, which I got hit by again, so that's pretty bad. Roll through, hit, oh I missed, ground slam. I'm going to take this opportunity to heal. Ground Slam is always a good opportunity to, to heal. Yeah, it's not too bad. You can also heal after the fire explosion at the other end of the level. So I'm not going to kill him because I want to show more things he can do. There's quite a few attacks he has not done yet. So we'll wait for that. Alright, so this is good. We'll see the approach again. I want to see if he does his uh, multi-fireball thing. So we'll wait this out. Yeah, you could heal here, obviously. Okay, see if he does it. No, he did that again. So in fact, we'll run away. That's a normal fireball. Web. You don't really want to do what I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to demonstrate things. He keeps doing that. All right, so if we, actually we can see what happens. You get hit by the web. You're basically screwed. You can't roll when that's on you. There's the three-shot fireball. And as I demonstrated there, it doesn't go the full distance of the level. So yeah, you can just kind of back off. But I would like to show rolling through it. Because it can be rolled through just with good timing. And he's not doing it. Another slow fireball. There it is. Yeah, you kind of have to wait. It, like, there's a slight delay between each, between each one, but yeah, you can roll right through it. 
So I guess we're good to kill him now. Okay, so that's Armored Spider. That's pretty much everything he can do. He does have quite a few attacks, and they all have a little bit of different timing. But yeah, you as long as you know the tells and you know how he moves, you can kind of anticipate everything. So now that we've beaten him, we'll go back to the Nexus. Because now World 2 will be closer to White Tendency. Because every time you kill a boss, the tendency shifts towards white. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to dupe some of those materials we picked up. Actually, we're going to dupe a lot of them. So buy item, Crescent Moon Grass. So we want to dupe Shard of Hardstone. See, you going to go with spend time with my very good friend. All right, have a good one, Taryn. Thanks for stopping by. And deposit more stuff. And, yep. So once we have these materials, we'll be able to like upgrade our shield and other minor things. Nothing huge yet. Because there's still other weapons we're going to get. And there we go. Shroud of Sharpstone. And large Shroud of Sharpstone. And then the chunk. Okay. Yep. Oop. Didn't mean to hit repair. Not yet. That's a hot. All right, and we should be good to go because we don't need the other stuff. So now we'll deposit. Help. Deposit. Don't need the full moon grass. Now we can't deposit this stuff because our inventory is full of full of those. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna drop those on the ground for now. Um, yep. And we don't need Ed's grindstone either. So for this stuff, we don't. Act, we can just drop on the ground. Actually, no, because we'll, we'll use that right now. We'll actually upgrade our shield right here. Upgrade buckler. This isn't a big thing, but again, if it's your first time soul level 1, anything you could get to your advantage, why not? Why not do it? So we'll upgrade our buckler to plus 9, which is basically good enough. We don't really need to worry about the plus 10. You could do that later if you really want to, but for now, this is more than good enough. So we have a plus 9 buckler. And we'll drop the other things here that we don't really need. So we have max of them in our storage. And now we'll repair. Repair Crescent Felshin in our armor set. Okay. Now we'll kill ourselves so we don't screw up our world tendency. And then we'll be good to go for our next objective. The next thing we're probably going to do is get the secret dagger from 3-1. Which is one of the better soul level 1 weapons. It might be the best soul level 1 weapon. And we have the sharp stone to upgrade it. So that's good. So that will be the next thing we do. Alright. So. Go over here. And we will go to 3-1. Tower of Latria. We will get the Secret Dagger. And another thing we're going to do here is we also want to save Sage Freak. Because he teaches Soul Ray, which is the best spell you can get at Soul Level 1, which we might use later. So that will be always good to do. This is a pretty easy level. And the Thief Ring, again, coming in handy here. It makes dealing with the Mind Flayers much easier. So that's a thing. And you could also, if you really wanted to, you could upgrade your Crescent Felshin more. But I'm not even going to worry about that yet, because this shouldn't be that hard. But you could do that if you wanted to. You could, uh, you know, you could dupe the Dark Moonstone we picked up and upgrade your Crescent Felshin to, like, plus two or three, if you really wanted to. So, first thing we're going to do... You can kind of run up right on these Mind Flayers, as you can see, like this. The Thief Ring makes that pretty easy to do. And, you know, we did a lot of damage to him. And just like that, he's dead. Pick up these keys. We don't need the the spice they drop. We have our old spice. 
And there's another one over here. This guy, yeah, his attack usually hits the wall like that. Using R2s here so they don't we don't hit the wall. Take this guy out. Wait, did he die? Okay, he did. Alright, so we're just gonna try to run up on this guy. Yep, you can just run up, get right or behind him, get the backstab, and there we go. And another set of keys. Now, I believe the secret dagger is right in here. No, not that one. Uh, is it this one? No, I think it's further in the level, actually. Yeah, it's not yet. Further in the level, but not far. But we'll get it. Okay. Is it over here? Help me. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's further in the level. Just checking. Okay. So we have the key for this gate. And go through here. So, yeah, we do want that secret dagger, though. Oh, I remember. It's on this floor, but we need the key first. So we'll get the key. Then we'll get the secret dagger. Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, it's right in there, I think. So there's a key over here we're going to snag. Also, there is... Actually, I think I just passed it. Did I? The Ring of Magical Sharpness. Or is... Um, maybe i forgetting where that is. But yeah, there's also a Ring of Magical Sharpness, which you might want. It's It could be good. Okay, it's not in here. Oh, he's right in front of my face. He's usually not standing there. Yeah, you can just kind of roll away from that attack. Then hit him when he runs forward. They're really not that hard to deal with. So we got another set of keys. So now they get the Secret Dagger. Which is an amazing weapon. Should be right over here. If I remember right. Yeah, I believe it's right in here. Kill some... Wow, I got a lot of them in that one swing. Right through the gate. Some of them are going to try to attack you, I believe. Or maybe it might not be in this room. And I think it is right here. Yep, Secret Dagger. So we'll upgrade that later. In fact, if you wanted to, you could leave the level right now and upgrade that since we have all the materials to get it to plus 9. But for now, I'm just going to keep going. But if you want to do that, you can. There's no rush, you know. If it's this your first soul level 1. Oh, the greed paid off. Just mash attack. Because, yeah, as you can see, we do pretty good damage for right now. Um, wait for him to get around the corner. Ambush him. Okay. So the Ring of Magical Sharpness is over here, if I remember right. Yeah, I believe it's right in here. Yep. So, it's, I'm probably not going to use this ring very much, but it is quite effective. And if you're having trouble with a boss, and I'll probably mention what boss in particular, but you could use this ring and use the Soul Ray spell I mentioned earlier to make it easier for yourself. Like, actually, a good example of that might be Flame Lurker. If my strategy for Flame Lurker, if you're finding it a little too difficult, you could try the magic strategy, where, and you'd want that ring for that. So now that we have that, we can continue. And pick up the key over here. Snag this key. And now we're going to get to the... Ar I'm not going to do the Arbalist skip that I normally do. Because again, this is more of a guide. I'll show how to normally do the level. And we'll continue on. As I get shot at by a giant hunk of flesh. Alright, so this cutscene starts. So yeah, you can do a skip where you roll through all these arrows from this arbalist. But for the sake of this guide, I'm just going to pick up the key. 
and do this the normal way, the way you're intended to do it. So we run back, run around this guy again. Not too hard. Try not to get shot. So we go back up. And it's for these gates here. So we'll go right in here. And we can see the Mind Flayer blowing things up in the distance for no reason. He likes to do that. We're actually just going to run right through because... Or we'll almost get hit. This gate gives you invincibility, so you can just kind of get to this gate. You can also lure those guys out with Soul Remains if you want. Either way is fine. Just kind of don't really want to fight both of them in the same room. Now we're going to shut off the Arbalist over here. Just in case we die, it's effectively a shortcut. And we're going to be coming back here anyway because we need to save Sage Frake. So now we'll do that. We'll get the key for that. And kill the guy that resurrects the boss. That's mandatory. And it's up here. There we go. So a long run to that door, unfortunately. Kind of annoying. Long run. Okay. So we got to kill the guy in here. And now that he's dead, we're free to fight the boss when we want to. And this key for Sage Frake, which we're going to want. So we got that. Now we got to go back. And now the next thing we want to do is... I'm actually going to demonstrate the Soul Remains cheese you can do on Black Phantom enemies. Because the Black Phantom crossbow NPC down there is very dangerous. And we'll be careful to drop down here. We do want these Widow's Lotus here for later, so we'll grab those. So what we'll do is throw some Soul Remains down there, and she'll get distracted by those. We'll drop down, and while she's attacking that, get a backstab. Then what we'll do is we'll throw another Soul Remains, so now she'll be distracted by that one. And then we rinse and repeat. So that you can do that to pretty much every and any, almost any enemy in the game, honestly. But it's especially effective on NPC enemies like this. That you can backstab over and over again. It works on the unique name Black Phantoms as well. It's one of the easiest ways to kill all of them. So very helpful to know how to do that. Get another backstab. And now she's one hit away from dying. And I can't hit her? Okay, cool. So now that she's dead, we'll save Sage Frake. And we'll pick up the item she drops. Because uh, more Emperor Black Eye Stone, if you're playing multiplayer, which we can't do three months from now, for three months from the time this video goes up, you'll never be able to do that again. So that's unfortunate. Now, on this Arbalist Skip Path, there is the ring, the Clever Rats Ring, which is the Red Tear Stone Ring of Demon Souls. Very, very, very helpful Soul Level 1 item. We're probably not beginning, probably not going to be using it in this playthrough because it's. It really shines in New Game Plus. In regular game, it can obviously be great, but it's not necessary. And if it's your first time doing Soul Level 1, I'd honestly say probably not to worry about it too much. Because you can actually take quite a few hits at Soul Level 1 in regular game and most of the time. So it's not really necessary. So now we'll save Sage Frake. And then he'll be at the Nexus. All right. He should be right over here. And there we go. Right over here. Excellent. So, talk to him. So now he'll be at the Nexus next time we go there. And that's really good. And the spell he teaches is uh, that we want... The, the spell we want is Soul Ray. It's probably the best spell at soul level 1 because it only takes one spell slot, which is all we have. It doesn't take too much MP, but it's quite powerful and it pierces enemies. 
really good to getting through levels, but we can't get that unless we kill the boss of this level. Now, again, like I said before, you could, you know, come back here later when you have better equipment. Wow, that was kind of weird. But, um, yeah, well, I'm going to do it right now. It shouldn't be that hard, but again, if you're having tr trouble with it, you can just come back with a powerful weapon and destroy it. But we should be able to do it right now. Also, another tip for this boss, having a ranged option like a bow can actually be quite helpful. I'm not going to worry about that because, again, this shouldn't be that hard. But it is another thing you could you could focus on. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else. Actually, we have Soul Arrow. That should probably be good enough to demonstrate what I'm talking about. A bow will be would make it easier because you can free aim a bow from far range. But you'll get the idea. And if you want to do that on your own, you can. Alright, skip the cutscene. So, we're going to run along the side. The sides, this area here, are the safest areas. You typically want to be on the, behind the pillars on the side. So make sure you have full stamina and mash that R1 button. Get a decent amount of damage in. You can even hit her when she's te already teleported like that. Alright, so decent amount of damage. Now the reason why I'm attacking one even though I know it's fake is that if you attack a fake one they'll disappear. Which is just that much less risk to worry about. So... That is not a real one. They, it's dependent on the spell they use. So, we know that one's a fake, so we're going to ignore that one. Because it's in a really obnoxious spot. So we'll stay along the sides. And that one's the real one. We saw that she did a different attack. I'll show that off. Different attack. Okay, so now... Attack. Attack, attack. We get hit by a guy in the back. That's always good. Heal up while she's teleporting away. Attack the ones that are in the sides or in the back. Alright, it's another fake. He'll disappear. They Okay, so the traps. Let me explain the traps right now. That's why we stick to the outsides. Because the traps typically don't go over there. The traps are kind of the most dangerous thing. So that's why we're going to stay on the outsides of the level. Where we don't have to worry about those hitting us. So that one's a fake one. So here's where the bow could help you. If you had a bow... And that you know that's a fake one. You just hit it you know, just to make it disappear. You don't really care about actually doing boss damage right now. See, because if you had a bow, I could have free aimed that from farther away and not been so dan in a dangerous situation like that. Okay, she disappeared because I hit her with one soul arrow. So now we can tell that's the real one because of the different attack it's shooting. So we'll go over here, hope there's no trap, get some hits in. That's basically the idea. And you can use a bow to, to get rid of the fake ones from really far away. See if it's this one. And that was just luck, but sometimes that's what happens. And yeah, that's Fool's Idol. It's a boss of patience, really. If you're patient, it's not so bad. So now we'll go back to the Nexus and upgrade our, mater our weapons. So yeah, Fool's Idol is not too bad. Just take your time with it. If you rush in, it can get bad. And a bow can make it much easier. And we'll go back to the Nexus. So now World 3 is a little bit wider tendency. So we're going to upgrade our Secret Dagger. And then we should be good. Upgrade the Secret Dagger, and I guess that's all we really need to worry about right now. Alright, so. Upgrade. Secret Dagger. Now, it's going to ask us, I believe it will ask, yes, quality. We don't want to do quality because quality is a scaling path. We want it to be on the regular path because we don't have high stats. So, regular Secret Dagger is what we want. And we'll get it to plus 9. And there we go. We don't have a Pure, but that's fine. And we'll repair. Then we'll deposit some things. Just in case. Chunk of Moonlight Stone. 
the stiletto that, that Freight gave us. Uh, and that should be it. Okay. Keep everything else. We're actually going to dupe that sticky white stuff. Just in case. What's the heart? And there we go. And we'll take those out. All right, so now we're going to talk to Frake we are. and learn a new spell. It's Fool Idol Soul. So there's two spells we're going to get in this playthrough. This is one of them. Learn it. Soul Ray. Selected. Now remember... Get rid of Soul Arrow, get Soul Ray. So we got that. All right, so now we're going to equip our Secret Dagger. The slightly less damage of the Crescent Falchion, but it's actually probably more. Because the, as you can see, the Crescent Falchion does 67 physical, 82 plus 20 magical. Secret Dagger is all physical, 133 plus 21 physical. And if you know anything about Soul's damage calculations, split damage usually gives you lower total damage because each damage type has to go through defense, and it works on an exponential scale. So basically, the more damage you have split, the less effective each one will be. So we're going to equip that Secret Dagger. And another reason why is, because the Crescent Falchion is a Crescent weapon, which does magic damage, it can't be buffed. The Secret Dagger can. So if we were to use, let's see, I'll put sticky white stuff here just for an example. We're going to put that here. Now the damage is 262, significantly more than the Secret Dagger. And that's because now it has magic on top of what it normally has. So yeah, the Secret Dagger can end up doing a lot more. And even more so, if we compare the two weapons, here's the Crescent Falchion. At, and this is basically the fastest it can attack. Oh, not that, not that. Get my stamina back. This is basically the fastest it can attack. So we got four attacks and one stamina bar, and it took kind of a while. Here's the Secret Dagger much faster and much more attacks per stamina bar so not only does it is it doing more damage already by a significant margin but also has much faster attack speed so the next thing we will do is 4-2 and actually i'm going to use turpentine for that yeah we'll, we'll alternate between turpentine and sticky white stuff for the secret dagger and the reason why we're doing four oh and i almost forgot gotta kill myself um the reason why we want to do world four is because they're pretty easy bosses easy levels and also because we, the next spell we're going to get is Second Chance. And we need to do 4-2 to get it. Because you need the old Hero Soul, which is the boss of 4-2 to, to, to learn that miracle. And Sir, er, Saint Urbane is in 4-2. So we need both of those things. We still won't be able to cast it yet, but we need the spell, obviously. That'll be the next thing we do. We have Soul Ray as backup. Okay. So we'll grab these. Now we'll do World 4. Not too bad. So our objectives now, save St. Urbane while in this level, and then beat the level. And we don't really need anything actually in the level itself, besides Urbane. So that's what we want to do. Alright, so first thing we're going to do... We're going to have our soul remains ready. Soul remains are very handy for this level. For the very first part, in fact, it it's not necessary what I'm about to do, but it makes just that less of a chance of dying. And if we can avoid dying, that's always good. And... If it would load... Okay. Alright, so, soul remains down here to distract that reaper, because that reaper does hit really hard. And we want to drop down in this switch, roll out of there. So now we've activated that switch, we'll drop down over here, and now we'll save St. Urbane. So we get this cutscene activated by walking towards the ledge, patches kicks us down, use a turpentine, and I'm going to use a soul remains like we did on the Black Phantom in World 3. And backs. Oh, I won't even need to backstab. 
This man, see, let's see how strong this weapon is. My God. Yeah, the secret dagger. It's quite good. All right, and chunk of dark moonstone could actually be handy. So I'll snag that. Talk to Urbane. So that's done. Urbane will be in the Nexus um, when we next time we go there. In fact, another useful thing for doing this is we'll also uh, meet Patches, and he'll show up in the Nexus too, which is quite good because Patches does have some important stuff that you might want to buy. So we'll talk to him. All right, so now Patches is in the Nexus. So that's good. Okay, so, another trick we can do right here is to stand in this spot right here and unequip the Thief Ring. Wait a couple seconds, equip it. And if you're done right in the right spot, both of those skeletons will kill themselves, and then you can just run down here and kill this guy. Now, this next part, I'll, make it, I'll do an easier strategy since we have Soul Remains. You can just kind of throw them right here. It's also possible to just run to the fog wall and clip through it, but this is a much safer strategy. Now, I'm going to show a kind of advanced little trick that can have some risk to it, but it makes this section way easier. So, we're going to stand right here, and we're going to roll forward just so we kind of brush against that wall. And if we do it just like that, we'll land here. Now, that Reaper, we want to knock him in that hole. So, we're going to drop behind him, roll, attack, attack, attack fall in the hole and die when we've done that all the ghosts will die and it clears out this whole section that can that i know that could probably be hard to learn but it makes that part way easier really the only hard part is learning where to roll to land on that ledge you basically just want to brush it up against that wall when you do it makes that part way easier so now what we want to do is have our soul remains ready run past this guy Try to look straight down this path, arc up, throw a soul remains. It will distract the ghost and the reaper, allowing us to walk right by them. Whereas before, that ghost might try to shoot a laser beam at us, the reaper might try to shoot his missiles at us. Now we can just run right by. No problem. And I'll heal up just for the sake of it. We lost a little bit of life from a fall. Now this part is actually quite easy to run through once you know how. These explosion white thingies are actually very easy to just run past. They don't have that much of an explosion radius. It's actually not too bad. So now Old Hero. Another very easy boss. Again, Thief Ring coming in very, in ha uh, very handy because it makes him much easier. So we're going to go in here. And I'll use Turpentine just to speed this up. Now, you always want to get behind him. The only thing you want to watch out for is you have enough room to, to run away after attacking him. Because when you're the further away you are from him, the less likely he'll be aggroed to you. So we'll start attacking. And then run away. I, I use the roll away. Like, if you do it like that, like, you see how far away I was before he even attacked. You don't really have much to worry about. And that's all thanks to the Thief Ring and the fact that he's blind. Yeah, like, just like that. Like, not even close to getting a hit. And you basically just repeat that process. It's that simple. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to attack him again. I was a little greedy. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Because you can just roll like that, too. But yeah, I was a little greedy there, but whatever. Gonna put my turpentine back on. Alright, so here, just be careful because, yeah, he will randomly attack like that. And it can kill you, so just be patient. If you're patient, you should not lose to this boss, like ever. I attacked probably way too much there, but it's fine. And I'm gonna just gonna attack him again. And attacking way too much. Actually, I'm gonna do, like, this is a risky thing I'm doing right here. You kind of stun lock him into a doing this attack. If you're worried about getting killed by him attacking, don't do that. I just do that because I'm impatient. You can just run away from him every time after you attack, and he'll basically never do anything. As I miss every time. Yeah, it's not. This is really not a hard boss. It's like one of the easiest bosses in the game. 
I almost die as I say that because I'm being greedy. Yeah, don't do what I'm doing right now if you've never done Soul Level 1 before. You can just run away after hitting him a few times and you'll win. Yeah, that's about it. So that's Old Hero. Alright, so now we'll go to the Nexus. And we'll learn, we'll learn Second Chance, but we won't be able to cast it yet. And I will explain some more Soul Level 1 mechanics that are all related to casting Second Chance. Now that we have this miracle. Because uh, being able to cast Second Chance actually requires a combination of multiple items, which we'll go over. Alright, so, first we'll learn the spell. Because you can learn spells even if you can't use them. So, go to Urbane, learn Miracle, Second Chance. We got that. Okay. But we can't remember it because we don't have two spell slots. So, there's a ring in the game called the Ring of, Mag uh, ring of Devout Prayer which you, we would probably put in one of these spots, which would allow us to ca have two miracle slots. We still wouldn't be able to cast the miracle, though, because right now, for example, we only have 97 MP. Second chance costs 100. Now, the reason we have 97 is because the silver coronet gives a 20% MP bonus, so that's why we're at 81 now. So we put the sword of the coronet on, and we have 97. But the silver catalyst, which we have on our left hand, gives us another 20% MP bonus, so now we have 116. So, basically, if we want to cast Second Chance, we would have to have our Silver Coronet on, Silver Catalyst in our left hand, and the Talisman of God in our right hand, or vice versa for the hands. And then, and the Ring of Devout Prayer in one of our ring slots to cast it. So the only thing we need now is the Ring of Devout Prayer. And how do we get that? Well, the easiest and best way to get it on Soul Level 1 requires going to World 5. So that's the thing. That's the next thing we're going to do. And Soul Ray will make that world much easier. So that is the plan. We don't need that. Uh, we'll actually deposit the Crescent Felshin for now. We don't need the Ring of Gash Resistance. Everything else can stay. And we have some Royal Lotus and Widow's Lotus for World 5. We are it. And also, I'll show that Patches is in fact here. In case you wanted to buy anything from him. And there's nothing really we need, but Shard of Archstone could be handy. Heavy arrows could be handy if you had a bow. So yeah, that's where you could buy arrows if you're using a bow. So now we will go to World 5. And actually, um, yep, we have everything we need. Turpentine is best for this world. The enemies are more weak to fire in general, from what I remember. So, World 5. So, the, what, we, what the item we want to get is in 5-2. So we're not there yet, but when we get there, we're going to be getting the, the Large Sword of Moonlight. Because that can be traded for the Ring of Devout Prayer. So that's that's what we're aiming for right now. But first got to beat 5-1. Which has a very easy boss, but a level that can be kind of hard. But we have Soul Ray, so that will make it much easier. And we have Soul Remains as well. So those things will help. All right, so Royal Lotus right here. Might need those. And we have our Soul Ray queued up. We'll see how effective Soul Ray is on these enemies. Yeah, pretty good. Two hit kill with base magic stat at first level one. Yeah, and you could just abuse that for like all these enemies. And there's really nothing that will stop you. It's pretty good. Drop down here, and we'll spice up, and we'll use Sol Ray on that guy there, not these guys, just so we don't fall off this ledge, as those guys are. And there is a, another Talisman of God here, just in case you missed the one in World 4, and Wars Widow's Lotus. Take these guys out from a safe distance. Pretty easy. Drop down. That's their most dangerous attack. That oh, and I fell. So that's kind of bad because those guys might chase us. Yep, which they are. If my camera would work correctly. Secret Dagger is also extremely good right there. I was attacking with no... Ooh, Black Turpentine. We will be using that later. That was the thing I wasn't going to mention yet. Because uh, normally you have to buy Black Turpentine from the merchant that's in this level. But now that we have one, we don't have to worry about that. We'll be using Black Turpentine later. Alright, so we killed that guy. Yeah, Secret Dagger is also extremely effective. Two hit kill. 
with a very fast weapon. Like, look at that. Just, they don't even have a chance. Easy peasy. Soul Ray from a distance. Secret Dagger. Yeah, and it, it makes short work of them. Like, we're soul level one and we're still killing enemies in like two seconds. Just like that. And another one. Yeah, you kind of want to wait for these guys to drop down. So we can also use Soul Ray to kill these guys from a distance without really risking much. And spice up as we miss. So another thing you can do, Soul Remains, to make it really safe when dropping down here. Because now they're not going to attack us. We can use our Secret Dagger to quickly kill them. Just like that. So now we'll heal, just because we lost a little bit of damage from falling. We're going to slowly walk off this plank. And I'm going to mash circle to get this back step, and then attack these guys, and then heal up. So pretty easy. Now there's going to be a lot of enemies dropping down around here. Get this guy through the wall. This guy drops down. Now when we go over to this item, this guy will get up. And this guy will get up. Easy. Alright, so we should be good to continue. Knock down this plank. Now, I'm going to throw... I'm going to go through this fog wall. I'm going to back up. Because these rats can be quite annoying and even dangerous. They do plague you. That's why we have the Widow's Lotus. So I'm going to use Soul Ray to hit them from a safe distance. And hit multiples of them. So that's always good. There we go. Easy peasy. And that's all the rats. Now, if you do get uh, plagued by those rats, you can go to this merchant right here because she sells Widow's Lotus. And she also sells that black turpentine we picked up. So that's where you could get both of those. And she also sells a Talisman of God if you didn't get one earlier. So some good items there. All right, so we'll spice up. And actually, we'll use turpentine just in case we need it for the... And those rocks fall down. Just in case we need it for this ogre. I'm just going to try to get his attention with Soul Ray. You don't really want to fight him over there. And yeah, you can just kind of roll away. Shoot him. Roll Just back up. Shoot him. And we hit the wall. But yeah, they're pretty easy with Soul Ray. As demonstrated. Oh, that guy fell down. As I get hit by him. Okay. So we're going to throw Soul Remains into this room. Because there's a bunch of enemies that will pop up in there. And that makes it much easier. Like this guy won't attack us now. And neither will this guy. That guy did though. But yeah, it makes it much easier with the Soul Remains in there. Alright, there we go. Oh, that guy's going to be a problem. Should be able to soul ram from a safe distance. Yep. Or it'll hit that rope. Or we'll just keep shooting. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. And I got poison. So if you get poison, that's why we have all this royal lotus. Nothing to worry about. Heal up. Spice up. Now this is where soul ray also comes in handy. Because we can pick these guys off. Hit multiple enemies at the same time. And we'll let him attack, roll away, shoot him again, roll away. Not too hard. Soul Ray, and another Soul Ray. Okay. So now, the boss here is actually very easy and very simple. Have your new moon grass ready. And before you go in the fog wall, use your turpentine. And then all we're going to do, and I'm not exaggerating, is I'm going to fight Leechmonger by running up to him and mashing the R1 button. And when I get hit, I will just grass. It's literally a boss, or you face tank. That, now, you can't really do that in New Game Plus, but we're not worried about New Game Plus right now. So we're going to drop down here, and we're going to mash the attack button. Now, if we get hit, immediately grass. Like, the second you get up. And then commence the R1 mashing. And that's how we will fight Leechmonger. Got hit, immediately grass. R1 mash. And that's how, we, that's how you do it. He's trying to heal, but we do more damage than he can heal. And there you go. And now we... Oh, was I in body form right there? 
Well, I screwed up. I shouldn't have been in body form. But we'll go back to the Nexus and then kill ourselves. I made a mistake. Not that it really mattered. I only got hit like once in the whole level. But yeah, that's my bad. I should have been in soul form. Not a huge deal, honestly, though. So we'll repair our stuff. Deposit any things we don't need. I don't think we picked... Oh, the yeah, extra talisman of God we don't need. Um, and that should be it. All right, now to kill ourselves. And then we'll do 5-2. And 5-2 is another level where the thief ring will come in handy. And actually, we will dupe our black turpentine right now. And I'll explain the difference between regular turpentine and black turpentine, because there actually is some significant differences. So, um... Well, obviously, as you can imagine, black turpentine is typically better. It does more damage. But it also has a much uh, long, a sh much shorter duration, which actually can be annoying. So I wouldn't even be that... Uh, I could understand why someone might just use regular turpentine. But I am going to use black turpentine most of the time. But there are times where regular turpentine is a little easier to use. But there we go. And we'll deposit. We'll have our black turpentine here. Don't need that. And we will deposit regular turpentine. I can't. Never mind. Take the black turpentine. And we'll depo we'll drop a lot of the regular turpentine. Drop half of it. And I think we're good to go. Okay. Now to go to 5-2. Another level where the Thief Ring... In fact, for all these levels, the Thief Ring is super good. So, it's a good thing we have that. So, in this level, the main thing we want to do is get the Ring of Magical... Uh, not the... What am I talking about? The Large Sword of Moonlight to get the Ring of Devout Prayer. There we go. So, it's very simple to do that, which I'll hopefully demonstrate. Not screwing up too badly. So, we're going to stick to this path. And there's, we're just going to block this guy because we're on a narrow path. Just block. Or he won't attack. That's weird. He nor Okay, he kind of tricked me. So, normally he attacks sooner and then you just block and counter a hit. But that's fine. That's fine. Pick up these Royal Lotus just in case we need some extra. And we'll roll when we land. Nope. I screwed it up. But yeah, normally you can't roll in the swamp. So yeah, that's an, just we can just run. Kind of run. So we'll ignore the poison for now. Not a big deal. That's a thing. Yep, this is... This is 5-2. Mostly just walking through a swamp. Not much going on. Pretty simple. Just kind of trudging along. And yeah, when my life gets low, I'm not even going to cure the poison. I'll just use new moon grass. Because there's no point in getting rid of the poison if you're just going to immediately get poisoned again. So when we get over here, I will pop a new moon grass. Right there and we will continue it heals us it doesn't heal us to full right now because poison also lowers your grass healing by 50 percent so that's a thing go through here avoid all the enemies and go right back into the swamp and back to running that item right there's another thief ring don't really need it we have one on they don't stack that's for sure It'd be kind of neat if they did but they don't so we'll keep going Now, there's some mosquitoes around here that can sometimes attack you. We're definitely going to ignore them because they're actually quite dangerous. They actually do a lot of damage, and they can be obnoxious to hit. Soul Ray can help with that. Okay. Heal. Oh, that's one of them. I shouldn't have healed right there. Yeah, we're just going to ignore them. Just keep running. 
and continue on this pathway. Now again, for here, we're going to go back in the swamp because there's a bunch of uh, ogres in the swamp. Now, from the last level, you probably saw that the ogres aren't so bad. You can just kind of soul ray them from a distance pretty safely. But in the swamp, you can't roll or run effectively, and there's multiple ogres right there. So getting their attention is a really bad idea. So we're going to stick to the side like this, and we're going to keep going this way. And there's a reason why, because this is the pathway to the large sort of moonlight, which we want. We're going to get our soul ray ready, because there's a bunch of mosquitoes over here. And we really don't want them to get too close. And there we go. And now, this is the... Pa oh, our poison ran out naturally, so that's cool. Didn't even need to waste a... Uh, Royal Lotus. We're going to put on our Black Turban time. And this is going to be the only time with a Secret Dagger where we two-hand the weapon. Because the two-handed R2 hits low to the ground, like that. Which is very good for killing these enemies. Normally, I would never two-hand with the Secret Dagger. Because the one-hand moveset is way faster, which is what you want. But the two-handed R2 is very effective at hitting low to the ground enemies. So we're going to do that. Just like that. Knock him aside. I'm going to see if the Turpentine really makes much of a difference for these guys. I missed. It really doesn't. We still get a two-hit kill. Heal up. Get this guy out of the way. All right, so we're going to go on this little ledge here. And we're going to uh, go back to one-handing so we can shoot Sol Ray at this slug sack thing. And we're going to keep shooting until they fall. They should eventually fall. There we go. Spice back up. So now that that happened, we continue along this path because now the large sword of moonlight is in the ground. And that's what we want. So we're going to drop here. And we're going to throw a bunch of soul remains. Because as you can see, there's a ton of just an absolutely ridiculous amount of slugs over there. We don't want to get just jumped by a million of them. So we're going to try to lure out as many as we can. Until... Alright, now it looks relatively safe. Try to get the quick roll. And run in there. This is really actually quite dangerous. So we're just going to grab this and try to get out of here. And there we go. If you die there, it's not too big a deal as long as you get the large sword of moonlight. So now that we have it, we'll just continue through the normal, the level like normal. If you wanted to, you could leave the level right now just to get your second chance. But it, it, I'm just going to continue. Hey, what build is good for a beginner on this game? Uh, if you're just playing casually, um, a, good a good weapon would probably be like the... It really depends on Demon Souls because... Even if you're like a totally new to the game, it's good to get some of the starting game weapons that make the early games left early. So I'd recommend getting the Crescent Falchion from World 4 as quickly as you can. And then use that until you get a more permanent weapon. Maybe after you get the Crescent Falchion, maybe you transition into, say, like a... Hmm, I'm trying to think what would be a good choice. Um, hmm. I want to... I, no, I can't... See, I can't recommend boss weapons because you got to beat Flame Lurker first. And that could give you trouble. Maybe just like a long sword with a proper upgrade path, but based on what you're doing, like a crushing long a crushing long sword if you're going to do strength, might not be too bad to do. But yeah, definitely get the crescent falchion early on if you're looking for an early game weapon. It can always do good. So we're gonna trudge over here, use a royal lotus to get rid of that poison, heal back up. We're gonna use a soul remains just to distract those guys so they don't attack us. And then these guys are going to come out. We're going to throw a soul remains. Distract them. Then just kind of casually walk by. Yeah, no problem, Fulgorio. Welcome to Mushroom. Just going to take out this guy. So here, another soul remains up there. So these guys are easy to walk past. So now we're going to get the shortcut. Because this shortcut lets us skip the whole level. Because if you died to the boss right now, you'd have to run through all that again. We really don't want to do that. So, Sol Ray. Sol Ray. So right now we just want to get that shortcut. 
So we're just going to watch out for those mosquitoes. Right like that. And we'll spice back up. Another soul ray. Now there's a guy trying to ambush us here. So I'm going to throw a soul remains. I'm being very careful right now because I don't want to miss that shortcut. There we go. Soul remains are really effective if you're just planning to play safe. If you're worried about dying in a in an intense situation. Like right now, soul remains. Distracts the enemy. Free backstab. It even distracted that guy from all the way over there. Backstab. Just like that. So now, we'll get the shortcut. We don't care about that gecko. So now the level is effectively beaten. So now, we will fight the boss. And then after that, we'll work on getting our second chance miracle, which will make the game much easier. And like I said before, if you're doing this level, and... You, you just want to get second chance like immediately and you don't even care about beating the level right now, you could leave and come back. So don't worry about that. Because, you know, there's if it's your first time doing a soul level one, there's no rush. So I'm going to go to the boss. I'm actually going to use a soul remains to make it less dangerous to get there. And then we'll fight Dirty Colossus. So for Dirty Colossus, there's really only two things we're going to worry about for the most part. We're going to put our black turpentine on before we go in the boss room. And then we're just going to try to get behind him. All we're going to try to do is get behind Dirty Colossus before we attack him. If you're behind him, you're typically very safe. Alright, so we're going to run. Just want to get behind him. That's all we're trying to do. Roll through this debris. And we're behind him. We're going to attack. Stay under his arm like that. Always try to shift to keep going behind him. We're stun locking him. Yep, walk behind him. Yeah, and the secret dagger makes short work of him. Now, he didn't do it, but yeah, I guess you can see secret dagger is quite good. He didn't do it, but sometimes he'll do his AoE explosion attack. If he does that, just walk away, heal if you need to, and then go right back behind him. Not too hard. So now that we've beaten 5-2, we will repair, kill ourselves, then go back to World 4. Because in World 4, we'll get the Ring of Devout Prayer that we need to use Second Chance. And that will make the game significantly easier. So that's definitely a good thing. And there we go. Yes, because there are cr trading crows in this game, just like all the other Souls games. And in this game, they're in 4-1. And they uh, that's what we're going to do right now. So, we'll go back to World 4, and we'll do the same thing we did before. But now that we have the Secret Dagger, it'll be even easier. And we'll get that trade in. So yep, we'll, we'll deal with the skeletons the same way we did before. We'll block, counterattack, simple stuff. Okay, and this is another good thing to demonstrate. So first, we'll kill the skeleton. You see Satsuki talking. Now, the reason he's there is because the world right now is in pure white world tendency. Now, if you look at the top right of the screen, you see where it says Shrine of Storms and there's that symbol to the right of that? That is the world tendency indicator. And that indicator right now is at pure white. And also, if you look to the far left, top left of the screen... Where next to our life bar, MP, and stamina bar, there's that symbol is our character tendency. And right now it is neutral character tendency. So those symbols are actually always on the UI. So, and also a thing you should point be, to realize is we didn't even beat Storm King yet. We only beat Educator and uh, Old Hero. And that was enough to get the pure white as long as we didn't screw up. So there actually is some leeway there. You do not have to clear the whole world set of levels to get it to pure white. So that's, a, that's something to keep in mind. Because that means if you do your World Tendency right, that means uh, you'll be in pure white, for example, before you even fight uh, False King a lot. And that will make him a lot easier. So that's, a, that's, a, that's important to know. Alright, so they're taken care of. Now to get to... The Trading Crow, whatever the hell they are. 
So we're going to go the same way we did before, but this time we'll take a different turn. Same arrow trap. So we'll go up here. And then we'll go down this pathway. Now this skeleton can be kind of obnoxious because he's a narrow passage passageway. So I'm going to block. All right, he's going to break my guard, get my stamina back, block, R2. That's what I wanted him to do. R2 because we're in a narrow passageway and I just want to get a strong attack in. Now this guy is kind of obnoxious because he's on the staircase. Same thing. Block R2. Now we want to go up here. And just like before, we're probably going to just block our... Oh, I can't block that, so I'll roll. Counterattack. Okay, so it's up over here. When we get up here, the bird will start talking to us. Now, I always put the items right here, because this is where they drop them, just to make sure it works right. Drop large sword of moonlight. Now, I walk away until... Wait, she didn't say anything. That's kind of weird. Let me try that again. Drop. Okay, good. That's what she's supposed to do. So, if she says that, it should be working. Load profile. And the character I'm on right now is this one. Load that up. And if we did that right, the Ring of Devout Prayer should be there. Hopefully everything went up. worked the way I wanted it to. And it did. Perfect. So now we have the Ring of Devout Prayer. We're going to next rule binding out of this world. What the hell is she talking about? All right. So, next rule binding to get out of here. And now we're going to put that ring on, which does mean we will not have the Thief Ring equipped. Keep that in mind, because that will make certain levels harder. But second chance is so good that it's typically worth doing that. So, Ring of Devout Prayer. Now we'll go to Urbane. Remember Miracle, second chance. So now, if we have second chance memorized, have a silver coronet on, have a silver cor uh, catalyst on one hand, talisman to God in the other, full MP, we can then cast second chance, which makes the game significantly easier. So now that we've done that, let's finish world five, since there's only one boss left there anyway. And we're gonna use our new ability to make it that much easier. This is basically Garl Vinlan the boss, not really made in a it's mostly Garl Vinlan, and he's quite easy. So if you go in the level with all that stuff equipped, you'll have the 100 MP necessary to cast, and there we go. And then we'll spice back up. We're going to keep the silver uh, catalyst in our left hand, because we're not going to be using a shield for right now. And more Widow's Lotus here just in case you need it. And here we go. So this is actually a very simple boss. All we're going to do is bait out an attack from Garl, from Garl Vinlan, roll behind him, backstab him, and then backstab him repeatedly. It's basically all we're going to do. And once we've done that, the boss will be beaten. All right, so we're going to use our Black Turpentine. Just, I'm just going to get close enough to him to start talking. He's not talking. That's very weird. He usually does. All right, so... I'm going to stand in front of him, he'll attack, I roll behind him, backstab. And then when he gets up, he'll turn around, I will get another backstab. Alright, then I'll let him reset, and we'll do the same thing. I wait, roll, backstab. And he's dead. <laughs> and then, all we have to do is talk to Estrella, and we're good to go. Simple as that. And we'll use a Widow's Lotus just so we don't die. But now that we're revived, we won't die. So there we go. So that's World 5. And since that's uh, Archdemon killed, we can go to 1-3 if we want to. So that's World 5 completed. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. 
All right, so we'll deposit some things we don't need, repair the same old usual thing. And over here. Um, let's see, what do we not need? We don't need the Ring of Sincere Prayer. Everything else can stay. We don't need Widow's Lotus anymore. We'll keep Royal Lotus just in case. And we're good to go. Okay. So we'll kill ourselves again. Just so we uh, keep in soul form. And then we'll finish off World 4 as well. Because there's only one boss there. Which is also a very easy boss. And that's all we need to do. World 4 is also very easy, very straightforward. You know, not much going on. It's probably one of the easier bosses in the game. So we'll get it over with real quick. And then after this, it'll, we'll actually have some hard stuff to do. Finally. Finally, some hard things. But our character is basically what we, you know, everything we need we have for the most part. We'll probably do, uh, I guess we'll do... Flame Lurker after this. So we'll cast our second chance. Spice up. And we're good to go. Let's see. Um, I'm actually going to drop more of the regular Turpentine because we're probably not going to be using it like at all. Actually, I did that wrong. There we go. Okay. So the thing we're all we're going to do is we're going to run to the Storm, Storm Ruler, pick it up, and then run to the house. That's literally all we're going to do. And they're going to shoot at me, but if I'm running, they will very rarely hit. And then, and since we have second chance on, we won't take that much damage anyway. Yep. Pretty simple. There we go. Now we're going to run to the house. Pretty easy. And once we're in there, we'll equip our Storm Ruler. Two-hand it. And then hit R2 to do this attack. And we're just going to pick off a lot of these little ones. When you're in the house, you can get hit by these guys, but it's very rare. And if you do, it's not that big a deal because second chance. So you're pretty much good to go at this point. Not really much to worry about. Maybe I can get that guy. Yeah, I got him. <laughs> so yeah, pretty easy. Once you kill enough of these guys, Storm King will show up. And uh, when you're in the house, it's pretty much impossible for him to hit you. I think he can hit you if you, like, stand way up here or in other such foolishness, but I don't know why you would do that. So there's really, like, once once you've done this, you pretty much can't lose. Pretty much good to go. Oh, like, that guy actually had no chance of hitting me because he was, like, shooting the wall. Okay, I got him. All right, so here comes Storm King. Yep, all of his attacks hit the wall. So we're just going to wait until he gets close and then attack. That's pretty much all there is to this boss. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So we're just going to wait for him to make another pass. And that will be World 5 and World 4 completed once we've done this. So not too bad. Here he comes back around... What a majestic creature. Wait for him to come down. Hopefully that I waited long enough. I did. So I think we'll be able to get three hits in here. Almost kill him. Oh, so close. I don't think I'll be able to get another hit in. Oh, well. Well, we'll get him in the next pass. So not so bad. Not bad at all. Here he 
he comes. And there we go. All right, so that's World 4 completed. We'll get unequip our Storm Ruler and go back to the Secret Dagger plus 9. And go back to the Nexus. It'll be the same deal. Repair, deposit, suicide. Repair, deposit, suicide. The Demon Souls fundamentals. And I guess then we'll go after Flame Lurker. Because why not? Repair. Didn't really even need to do that, but whatever. Deposit. We don't need the Pure Cloudstone or the Storm Ruler. And that should be good. Alright, so Flame Lurker, the next thing on the agenda, which is like the, probably the third hardest boss in the game. We're not going to use Turpentine, obviously, since he's made of fire, sticky white stuff. We won't be needing Soul Remains. And yes, Kling Ring and Ring of Devout Prayer. So we'll kill ourselves before we do this. So here's some tips for Flame Lurker, because he is one of the harder bosses of the game. So I'm going to be using a melee strategy, which I think is the most effective. But it's a little trickier to pull off than the magic strategy you could also use. So if what I'm going to show isn't working for you, what you can also do is equip the Ring of Magical Sharpness, which we have already gotten, right there. And you can basically just run away and spam Soul Ray at him. Because we're going to have second chance in both strategies. So if you have second chance and you're just running away shooting a Soul Ray, it shouldn't be that hard. So if what I'm doing isn't working out for you, you can do that. But I'm going to use the melee strategy because I think it is more effective. But you can do either thing, either one you want to do. I will say running away and shooting Soul Ray is much easier. It's very effective. But I think what I, the way I'm going to do it is much faster and much more deadly. But again, it's up to you. You can do whatever you want to do. And I can understand, if you've never done Soul Level 1 before, melee Flame Lurker might seem a little too difficult. So gonna get to where he is for now and I'll show some little tricky stuff you can do to make this easier once we get there drop down here and drop down here okay and drop down right here and then here and then over here. So pretty easy to get to Flame Lurker. Don't really have to deal with any enemies or anything. So if you die, it's not a big deal. Because you can just keep running back. Don't have to worry about a level or anything. Alright, so. For now, I'm going to unequip the Kling Ring. So we have extremely low life. Put on the Thief Ring. But don't worry about that. Because we're not actually going to be fighting him yet. So we have second chance up. We're going to go in here. Now, the reason we put on the Thief Ring is because if you come in here with a Thief Ring on, he will not see you. He will not aggro on you. So we can come in here and walk. Don't run. Just walk over this way. Do not hit that circle button. If you stay on the right side, he will not see you. I'm also going to pick this up while I'm here. Not a big deal, but we have it. And then once we're behind him where he can't see us, we'll take the Thief Ring off. Put our Kling Ring back on, go back to full health. Then we're going to use our Sticky White stuff, and then we'll start attacking. And as you can see, we stunlock him and do a lot of damage. Now that hop back -y attack he did is a problem, so I'm going to immediately heal that. Alright, that attack is his most dangerous attack. You typically want to roll into that. So he, sl he swung, he swiped, ground pound, right? Swipe, then ground pound. That attack, roll... That's his dangerous attack. Alright, so we're going to get near him. When he does that, he's always going to hop away. He can get a hit in on that. We're going to go close to him again. He did that again. So, going to get a hit in on him. He'll hop back. I'm going to rebuff, and I fucked it up. So I'm just going to bait him out. Alright, so he should ground pound. Ground pound, I'll buff. Alright, so we got our buff back, so we're going to go near him, ground pound, so now he should swipe, the swipe is the dangerous thing, and I'm going to hit him, he'll hop away, he typically alternates between swipes and ground pounds, 
So ground pound, swipe. We hit him. Hops, hops away. Hopping a lot, hopping a lot. Swipe. So now he should ground pound. If we run behind him, the ground pound will miss, and then we can hit him. Swipe. All right, that attack is great. That's his worst attack. It does, like, no damage, and it leaves him very vulnerable, as you can see. So now that he's enraged, his ground pounds are going to have much more range, and they're going to be much more difficult to dodge. So we're going to run away. Right now, I just want to get my buff back, because it's going to run out. So that's all I'm trying to do right now. Gonna wait for... All right, he did that. I will use that opportunity to buff. He did it again. So we'll punish him for that. Yeah, that leap attack he does, that's all we're trying to do now that he's in rage. We're just going to run away until he does that attack. I rolled there because the AoE is much bigger. He did it again. He did the leap. I punished him for it. So I think I hopefully demonstrated that Flame Lurker isn't as unpredictable or as dangerous as he appears. There are definitely set, set patterns you can, you, you can exploit. He alternates between the swipes and the ground pounds when he's enraged. Try to bait out that leap attack. That's a very bad attack for him to do. Good for you, bad for him. And that's basically a, a simple way to beat him. If that isn't working for you, though, you can do the runaway soul ray strategy. So now we're going to repair, suicide, deposit. And the reason I picked up the chunks of Dragonstone is because the, uh, the dragon path in this game is like the non-scaling damage of the game. Chunk of Dragonstone. Uh, it does non-scaled fire. You make this game look so easy, lol. Yeah, I guess so. Um, the reason why we have those fire upgrade materials is that the the, uh, the dragon fire weapons are really good at soul level 1. So if you wanted to make one of those, you can now. So that's another option at your disposal. So we're going to kill ourselves. Get back to soul form. And we'll finish up world 2. And now the uh, Dragon God is going to be very easy because we have Second Chance, and, Dra and Second Chance kind of breaks that boss, as I will hopefully demonstrate. So we'll go to Flame Lurker, Archstone. The thing is, though, Fulgario, is that the game really can be easy for anybody because most of the... Like, what I'm doing, it's mostly just no knowing the enemy is just knowledge. Like, once you know how the game works... It's not as hard as it appears. So we're going to cast Second Chance, Spice Up. So here's another useful tip. The Secret Dagger is really good, as I've shown, but it's really bad at breaking debris, like in the Dragon God boss room. So we're actually going to put our Secret Dagger... We're going to swap our Secret Dagger and our shield. We're going to two-hand our shields and bash with the shield. We'll bash the debris in this boss. So I will show you the method I use to beat Dragon God. I feel it's one of the safest, easiest ways. So first, we have second chance, which means we have a lot of margin for error. We're going to go in the fog. We're immediately going to run. We're going to run, run to the right, break this debris. It takes two hits. And we're going to stand behind this pillar, and we're going to wait. And we're going to watch Dragon God's face. We're going to watch his eyes. So if his eyes change back to normal color, like that, he can't see us. He doesn't know where we are. We're going to wait for him to look up right there, and we're going to run. We're going to break this debris, and we're going to keep running. Because we get hit by that claw, but we have second chance. So it's not going to kill us. And then we activate the switch. And there we go. And now, we'll cast second chance again. Heal up. Spice up. Go back to our shield, two-hand it. We'll try to roll here to get down here. And then that lets us skip part of the segment. We're going to stand here and watch Dragon God. We're going to wait for him to wince and look up. We're going to wait for him to wince and look up. Right like that. Once he does that, we run. Running attack, R1. Get our stamina back. Running attack, R1 on this. And then we hit the switch over here, and Dragon God is now effectively beaten. Just like that. So now we'll use Soul Ray for the last part just to be super safe. So there's no chance of us dying. Because it actually is possible to die at this part. I mean, 
the, since we have second chance, not really. But it is possible, and we're just going to not even not even risk that. So we're going to drop on this platform. We can pick up this legendary soldier soul. Lock on, and soul ray. Lock on, soul ray. And that's it. Oh. Oh, two more. And, yep, that will be another world down. Easy peasy. And then we'll go back to our normal setup. Secret dagger here, shield here. And there's a pure dragon stone if we wanted to make a maxed out dragon weapon. So that's world two, four, and five are finished. And three, one, and one, one are finished. So I guess the next thing will be man eaters, which are probably the second hardest boss in the game. So, repair. And deposit. And I think we're good to go. Yes. Alright, so... We're gonna put... I guess we'll keep... We probably should use the... We're actually gonna go to Black Turpentine. We probably should have the Thief Ring on for World 3. For 3-2. Three, hmm. I don't know if this is the best setup, honestly. Well, we do have to kill ourselves. Because Thief Ring is very good. And, uh... I'd prefer to have it on for 3-2. But then again, maybe it's fine. Maybe it is fine. We'll see what happens. Because you do want to mostly run through three, World 3, like 3-2 specifically. Because there's a lot of narrow cliffs, and you really don't want to be fighting a lot of enemies on narrow cliffs. I guess we'll see what happens. So, 3-2. Boot up here. And then after this, there'll only be the rest of World 1. So we cast our second chance. And spice up. Well, I really didn't need to spice up because I have my shield on, but that's fine. So we're going to try to just keep running through the level. Because most of these gargoyles just kind of fly, fly around and be annoying anyway. And you don't really want to be chasing them down, fighting them, because you're just going to end up like falling off a cliff or getting grouped up by a bunch of enemies. We just, so we just want to keep going. This is a very long level, and there's no shortcut to the very end, so dying is really crappy here. So we're going to try to avoid that. That's my goal. And uh, there's pretty much no more items or anything we really need for the rest of the playthrough. If there's any weapon or whatever you want to make, we, should, we pretty much have all the materials you might need. We have all the dragon stones, we have... Uh, everything except the pure Dark Moonstone. Like, we have a lot of that stuff already. I mean, you could get a bow if you want to, like I mentioned before, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to keep going. Roll through here, because sometimes that gargoyle will try to hit you in the back. Now, we want to get to this elevator up here. Just make sure not to run too far. Because up here, the elevate, there is a hole where the elevator would be. And you can easily fall there and die. Ooh, that was good timing on the elevator. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes you just have to wait there, which can suck because a gargoyle might come up on you. Like that guy down there. Yeah, this level has some annoyances. That's for sure. Alright, kill these guys. Activate the next segment of the level. Okay. So we'll skip that cutscene, and we're going to use the cage on the left. You might know that Yurt the Silent Chief is over there. We're just going to leave him there. We do not care about that. So go in the cage and ride it down. And we're going to do the same thing down here. We're just going to run through. Because these enemies down here are not that hard to run past. And with second chance, we do have some margin for error. So, that's the idea. No Thief Ring, though. So, that makes it a little trickier. You could experiment with Thief Ring if you're having trouble with the level. Because the Thief Ring does make things much easier. 
You could even try body form at this point as long as you don't go back to the Nexus. And that's another thing I'll explain. Um, so yes, if you die in body form, the world tendency does go darker. And wow, that was bad. Well, I guess if you get stuck, you could attack. Um, wow, there you go, second chance. Well, that's why we have that. Um, what was that? Oh yeah, so let's try to run through the level. You might want the thief ring. So we're going to try to cast second chance again. Had to get our catalyst out. Getting chased by enemies. So yeah, this is where second chance helps. Because we would have died if we didn't have second chance. I'm going to try to run through. Oh, so what I was like, trying to explain before. Um, if you uh, die in body form, yes, the world tendency does go down. But here's the thing about that. The world tendency doesn't adjust until you travel to the nexus or something. So if you can die a hundred times in body form in a level... And the, the world tendency won't actually go darker until you leave the level. So let's say you're doing this level and you're committed to doing it. And you're going to just keep doing it until you beat man eaters. You could go to body form and keep dying and it won't make the game the level harder. The only thing is though, if you're going to do that, you have to keep doing it until you beat the man eaters. So that's why I wouldn't recommend it yet. But the thing is, um, body form could be helpful for the level itself. Because if you're in body form, you don't need the Cling Ring, so you could have the Ring of Devout Prayer and the Thief Ring. So that could be helpful. I'm going to use a Black Turpentine over here. And then attack this Gargoyle. Now the reason I'm doing this... Oh, that was bad. He flew away. It's because the Elevator over here oftentimes takes forever to come down. So I like to kill that Gargoyle while he's vulnerable. And that's actually good that that Scent Bead came all the way over here. Yeah, this is the thing I was worried about. So that's why I, I turpentine for this guy. Because that can happen. We can avoid that guy's arrows. And there we go. We got the elevator. Yeah, that's the tricky part of the level. Another tip for that, if that part is also is getting you killed a lot, soul remains. You could throw a bunch of soul remains to keep the enemies at bay. That's probably the smarter thing to do. It's probably what I should have done. But yeah, that part can be very dangerous. And watch out for that guy. So yeah, that last section there is by far the trickier part of the level. Which is unfortunate because the shortcut is right here. So if you die there, it really sucks. But once we've done this, now we can fight man as much as we want with no risk of dying. Well, no risk of losing progress. So that's good. So now we don't really have to worry about the level itself anymore. So now we'll be fighting what is probably the second hardest boss in the game. And just like Flame Lurker, if my strategy isn't working for you, you could try the Soul Ray Ma Ring of Magical Sharpness strategy, which is also quite effective. But we're going to try to use the melee strategy because I think it is better once you learn how it works. Because this is one of the fights in the game where being fast actually is a big deal. Because, uh, oh god. Because... Um, so there's two man eaters, right? Similar to the Gargoyles in Dark Souls 1. But the big difference is there's two triggers for how the second Gargoyle shows up. The second Gargoyle shows up when the first Gargoyle is almost dead or when a timer runs out. And that's why you want to go fast. Because if that timer runs out and the first Gargoyle still has a lot of life, it makes the fight dramatically harder. So you want to avoid that. In the melee strategy, you can typically get more burst damage in at certain times especially the secret dagger, so that is a good idea. So there's going to be a... Oh, I want to have soul remains for this last mind flare. Am I being attacked by gargoyles all the way over here? Really? So, oh, never mind. I didn't need the soul remains because he is facing the other way. So we'll get him from behind. Get some free hits while he's getting up. Okay, so we don't want the soul remains then. And we're going to heal up. We're going to unequip our shield to have our silver catalyst in our left hand spice up. So that way, if we need to apply second chance, all we have to do is switch to our talisman of god and cast it. Then we're going to buff with our black turpentine as soon as we go in the boss room. And then we'll see what happens. So another thing is, I don't have the thief ring on right now. And that's really important because the thief ring can actually glitch out this fight. So if you're in the boss itself, make sure you do not have the thief ring on. So we're going to go in the boss. Put on our black turpentine. Now we're going to approach and see what he does. If he tackles... Alright, if he does that, just get him a little R1 attack. Roll away from him with good timing to get a punish on the tackle. If you roll too early, 
you're going to get hit. Now, if you're having trouble doing that, you could roll forward, which is easier. But if you roll forward, you're not going to get as much damage in. Now, I cut off his tail there, which staggers him, which let me get a lot of damage in. Roll into it. Get some hits in. I did not. I did that wrong, actually. You don't want to walk in front of him like that. All right, so that was bad, and our turpentine ran out. So we're going to hide behind this pillar. Oh, that was bad. And we died. Oh, we did not die. So second chance saved us. So we're going to heal up. All right, what's he doing? All right, we're going to use the pillar. You can roll through that as well. All right, so now I'm going to take this chance to cast second chance. And now he's trolling me. There's really not much you can do about this. All right, so we'll put our turpentine back on. You want him to land like that and attack him from behind. This is bad. So he's wasting a lot of our time right here. So this is bad. This is what you don't want to happen. All right, so we're going to position ourselves to land behind him. Get some hits in. Second one showed up because he's almost dead. And that actually worked out. So the second one's going to land right here. We want to get behind him again. Position yourself. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, you don't want to get in the corner like that. So our turpentine ran out. So we're going to back off. We're just going to wait for opportunities to heal. Like this. And then put our turpentine back on. We don't need the rush now because there's no more... We don't have to hurry for the second gargoyle. Second man-eater, I should say. So now we can play safe. I uh, have a good one, Fulgorio. So we're going to position ourselves so we're behind him. We couldn't, so we're going to... we're gonna. Oh, he's walking. Get him from behind. Tackled away from us, which is good. When he does that, get one hit in. Roll. Our turpentine ran out. That, see, this is one of the annoying things about black and turpentine. You can see it is, it is something you got to deal with. So you could use regular turpentine if that's not working out for you. It is... Wait, what is he doing? What the heck? Okay, Gargoyle. Man-eater, whatever the hell. Alright. Position behind him. And there we go. So that wasn't great, Man-eater. There was some sloppiness. Like, as you saw, there are some stupid things can't happen with that fight. But we, we dealt with it. So we'll go back to the Nexus. But yeah, not too bad. But yeah, you see there's a lot of, you know, what people call RNG there, randomness. Where they can stall for time by flying in the air. Some wonky things can happen. So if you die a few times, don't worry about it. You could get knocked off a cliff. Stupid things can happen. But it's okay. But yeah, it's mostly about baiting out the tackle, rolling behind it, hitting him in the back, that kind of thing. So now we'll kill ourselves and we'll fight Old Monk. Come. And that will be the end of World 3. And there we go. So Old Monk is a very easy fight, very straightforward, so not too much to say about it. You just kind of, you know, it's it's very simple. We'll see. We'll sh it'll be shown. It's basically just kind of bait out the homing soul arrows, and that's about it. It's really all there is to it. And if you're flying offline, it's the same fight every time. Just an NPC with claws, so there's really not much going on to it. So the first thing we'll do, cast our second chance. Just like that. And there we go. Cutscene. Alright, skip it. I'll use a turpentine for this part. Because why not? Almost a one hit. Oh, one hits with an R2. That's good. We're in pure white world tendency. R2. Alright, so I'm going to have soul remains ready. Because it will make the uh, mind flares here much easier to deal with. If I could get to them. Because in these narrow passageways, they're kind of annoying. 
kind of annoying to deal with. So, soul remains very helpful. All right. Cutting right through. Yeah, like right there, he was going to shoot me. But the soul remains actually made him change target midway through. All right, so now we're ready for the boss. So we're going to unequip our weapon so we can reapply our turpentine. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to block, strafe, backstab. The timing for it is tight, but that's what we're going to try to do. Block, strafe, backstab. We get a lot of damage in. And when he gets up, try to chain backstab him. Or we could just R1 him in the back. So when the orbs get up, back away. Wait for him to face you. And I didn't want to block them, but I had to. I almost would have died. You want to roll out of the way of those. Block. Backstab. Oh, didn't get it. The reason why I want to backstab him mostly is because then I'll get an opportunity to heal. Because right now, this is not going well. There. So now we can heal. Because the orbs won't shoot you if he's facing the other way. Like that. And backstab. Oh, I got the push. Yeah, like right there, you can see the orbs weren't going to fire because he's facing the wrong way. So it's mostly trying to block, strafe, backstab, or hit. And be careful about the orbs. That's about it. Alright, so that only leaves world 1 left. 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 4. But that does leave Penetrator and Allant, two of the harder bosses in the challenge. Allant is by far the hardest. But we'll see what happens. I don't think it'll be too bad. So now we will repair. And actually, a thing I'll do, just in case, I will have a Stone of Emperor Eyes just in case we need them. We probably won't need them, but just in case you need them, we will have them on deck. And Stone of Emperor Lies. And we don't need those Royal Lotus anymore. We'll deposit everything we don't need since we're on the final stretch of the playthrough. Um, don't need these. And then we'll take Emperor Lies, just in case. All right, so we're good to go. World 1. So Tower Knight's really easy. That's going to be quick and easy. Not much to worry about there. But then a 1-3 will be difficult. 1-3 is one of the harder levels in the game. So that should be interesting. In fact, I think I'll even use Body Form for 1-3. I think that's what we'll do. So second chance. Shield, Dagger, and here we go. So 1-2 is a very easy level, I'll show. Really, the only thing you have to worry about is uh, is the path right before Tower Knight. Like, the section right before Tower Knight. But Soul Remains will be helpful for that. Oh, we don't want the Nexual Binding there. And there we go. So we walk here to bait the dragon. Then we go back. The dragon should come down. And then we follow behind him. So we run, we sprint. And that's pretty easy there. That's all we have to do, really. And then we do that again here. Stand right around here to bait the dragon. Then go back. The dragon should attack on this side. Killing all the enemies as well. And we chase behind him. Now these archers, I'll use the solar mains because why not? Just to make them easier to deal with. I'll even use I'll even use a turpentine. So why not? Alright, so we'll continue. And we'll do the same thing here. First we'll kill this dragling. Kill this dragling. Then we'll follow the dragon again. And 
then more archers. Should not be a problem with this weapon. Yeah, we one-shot them even without a buff. Bait out this guy, backstab. And same thing with this guy. Just kind of bait him out, backstab. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could kill Tower Knight right now without even dealing with the archers, but I will show the easy traditional way of doing it, where you just kill the archers before you even, even engage Tower Knight. So we're going to run straight ahead so he misses us. And then we kill this guy. And our daggers at plus nine kills them in one shot, which makes it very easy. You don't even really have to worry about Tower Knight's attack there. It doesn't really have very good tracking or a good hitbox. If you're usually, even if you're not even thinking about it, it won't hit you. So nothing big to worry about here. Just running around killing archers. Easy peasy. Yep. As I get shot in the face. Or I miss another attack. Got a backstab I didn't even try to do. Okay, so we'll heal. And then we will spice. Actually, I didn't need the spice. We'll buff. Didn't need the spice. Forget that. Actually, I probably should have, but I didn't have my silver catalyst out. But that's fine. So we'll get behind him. See what he does. That is the worst thing you can he can do if you're not paying attention, which I was not. So don't do that. So we're going to get behind him again. All right, so when he does that, stay behind, hit his ankles. Now get out of there because we're back into a wall. All right, if he does that, that's good. That's like his worst attack. And hit his leg. Get out of there if he shield bashes. I don't want him to be backed up against the wall like that. There we go. This is good. And he's going to fall. And now he's basically dead. Secret dagger with turpentine on it will kill him the second he falls. All right, so we'll go back to the Nexus, update our world tendency. Okay, so here's what I'll do for 1, 3, and 1, 4. I will use body form with the Thief Ring and the Ring of Devout Prayer, so we don't need the Cling Ring. But here's why. So world 1 should be either pure white or very close to pure white. Be Actually, it should be pure white, because I believe when we fought... Um, yeah, when we went to world four, it was in pure white before we killed Storm King. So it should be in pure white. So here's the trick, though. You can't go back to the Nexus until we beat the game, basically. But there really should be no reason to, because we have everything we need. And, yeah, so, so basically, even if you wanted to take a break from the game, just quit the game while in the world. So that way you don't even have to go back to the Nexus. Because, for example, if you die a bunch while in... In, while trying to do this and you leave world one it will go dark so try to avoid that actually before we do that make sure you have everything you need so you don't have to come back so we're going to get new moon grass old spice and black turpentine so we have everything we need so now we will go to world one and we will not leave world one until we beat the game because we don't want to screw up well again it doesn't it no, i shouldn't say that only worry about not going back to the Nexus if you die in body form a bunch of times. Like, let's say you're doing this the first time. Maybe start in soul form just to learn the level at soul level 1, so that way if you die it doesn't matter. Really, you don't even have to worry about that until you go for the body form strategy. So you don't even have to do it this way if you don't want to, if you're afraid of that. Because you can do it in soul form, but I think this is the easiest way. So I'm going to not leave World 1 until I either beat the, beat the game or I don't die at all. If I don't die at all, then I don't have to worry about it. So, we're going to use Soul Remains on these dogs, because they're annoying. Lure them out. Block. Well, I didn't even need the block. So now there's the easiest, most obvious trap in the world up here. These boulders are going to come down. They're just going to stand here. That's all there is to that. And, and another reason why is because uh, the Thief Ring makes Soul Remains that much more effective. Because 
if you, if the enemy is has to be closer to you to notice you, they're more likely to aggro the. They're more likely to get distracted by the soul remains. So we soul remains out of there and kill our way through. Soul remains here. Yeah, you can just abuse. Oh, or his arcing swing will hit me anyway. Yeah, soul remains are very good. We're gonna heal. Now there's a part coming up which. It's a little cool little trick you could only do the first time in the level. So I'd say if you die or if you don't get this right, soul remains are your backup plan. But if you're doing this the first time, this is the best way to do this part. So we're going to run up to about pa the second passageway, run back, and it, yep, just like that, the boulder will kill both of those guys. If you don't have the boulder, because the boulder will stay here when you come back again. If the boulder's gone, use soul remains, like throw soul remains here, Try to lure out the assassins. Stuff like that. This guy by himself is not much to worry about. Okay. So we'll continue. Into here. Now, I don't... I'm actually not even going to bother killing him. Again, if you're having trouble getting past him, soul remains. Soul remains are amazing. And there's, here's another strategy you can only do here the first time. If you die... Again, what am I keep saying? Soul remains. Abuse soul remains if you die here and you have to come back. I'm going to run up here. Roll to the side of this boulder. Hit this guy from behind. The boulder kills those guys that were following me. And I continue with the level. And now soul remains. Going to make it easy to get past him. Just like that. Not even going to deal with these archers. They're very easy to run past. And right here, what I'm going to do is Soul Remains. And it'll make it easy to get past. Oh, he's not going to let me past. A block. But you could throw another Soul Remains. So now we're going to run down here and activate the shortcut. And now that we have the shortcut, the level is effectively beaten, at least the hardest parts, as I almost get killed by that guy. So what are we going to abuse in the rest of the level? Soul Remains. <laughs> So a soul remains for you. I'm actually going to kill these guys just so they're not a threat to me. Now that the soul remains is distracting them. You can R1 combo them to death. And we're going to use some more soul remains. TM. The best item in the game. Get a free backstab. An archer is actually shooting down here. And for this section here... All these enemies, soul remains. The only trick to this part you have to know is that the three red-eye spearmen will not be affected by anything until the cutscene activates. So that's why they're not moving. So the cutscene activates, throw another soul remains, they will be aggroed to that one, and then you can run past. That can be a tricky thing that you don't know about. <coughs> Sorry. So now that we've gotten through the level, we don't need a shield anymore. So spice up in case you need to reapply a second chance. You can use a black turpentine before going in the boss fog. What we're going to try to do is stunlock penetrator. I have to explain hyper mode while the cutscene is playing. <coughs> so when an enemy is doing a certain attack, they'll have what's called hyper armor. It's, it's essentially like poise. Where they'll attack you, and if you hit them, you will not stagger them. But even against some bosses, if they're not doing an action like an attack, and you hit them, you will stun them. So it's possible to combo bosses once you know that. So that's the thing we're going to try to exploit. And I love that cutscene. So we'll see if I can get that to work properly. We have to get a clean hit. Roll through. Attack. Got a clean hit. Got a combo. Just like that. And here the secret dagger so fast and costs so little. Oh shit. Yeah, you don't want to get hit by the penetrating attack. Oh, when he does that attack, roll sideways. Not forward or back. Sideways. Roll into that attack. Sideways. And then punish it with a combo. Our buff ran out, so we do a lot less damage. We're going to reapply that when he's attacking. Roll away from that. Roll into that. Attack. Combo. Even without stamina, it can still combo sometimes. It's that good. 
Roll into that. Combo. And there's Penetrator. All right, now, it would depend on what happened to you. But since I didn't die, I could return to the Nexus. Because, you know, it wouldn't have mattered. But I'm not going to. But you could if... if it depends on your... If you died, like, ten times, yeah, probably don't go back to the Nexus. If Again, in body form. If you died in soul form, it doesn't matter. So now I'll show you my favorite way of getting through 1-4. This is what I feel is the easiest way to do that. With the Thief Ring, mind you. So we run on the right side there. Now this part can be kind of technical, but it's not too hard once you get it down. You run in here, run up to this guy, push him. Forward R1. Now there, he blocked, but it didn't matter. Same thing here. Forward R1, forward R1, forward R1. Now just like I've said many times before, if those these tricks aren't working out for you, use Soul Remains, because Soul Remains are amazing. One Dragon Breath, breath run behind it, run to the left side of this guy. He's going to try to shoot at us with fireballs, roll, run again. Now that was actually very bad RNG. The fireballs is the worst thing they can do. If you die because they shot a fireball at you, don't worry about it, try it again. I die a lot of times when they shoot fireballs there too. It's just kind of bad luck. If they do like a melee attack, it's very easy to run through there. Now for the last Dragon Breath, he shoots a fire attack. Do not follow that, you will die. Follow the second one like that and you'll be perfectly fine he does a long range attack and a sweeping attack the second one is a sweeping attack always run after the sweeping attack now there's a little trick here i'm going to show now we're going to use the soul remains normally i have Estrava kill himself by falling off the ledge but there's actually an item i want so i'm going to throw it right there so he does not go anywhere i'm going to oh what the f what um I'm actually confused. He ignored the soul remains. You know what? We'll block then. I'm actually just going to run away <coughs> to reset the situation so I can recast second chance. We'll fight him over here so we don't have to worry about ledges. And then we'll throw a soul remains here. Will he? Okay, that's what he's supposed to do. I don't know what that was about. As I try to attack him with a talisman. Okay. And we'll throw another soul remains. We'll use the black phantom soul remains cheese. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. But yeah, there we go. And there's a very specific reason why we're doing this. Which I'll explain now that we have the item we want. So he has... Okay, we don't want the rune sword. So we're going to drop that. Don't care about that. What we want is... Okay, we need to drop more stuff. So what can we drop? We will drop... Okay, we don't need 99 Emperor Lives. We probably could drop 20 of those and be perfectly fine. Drop 20 of those. All right, we want the Rune Shield. And why do we want the Rune Shield? The Rune Shield has a ridiculous amount of magic defense. And it's a, uh, it's a fixed number. It's not based on stats or scaling. So it's really good at soul level 1. Like, see how much magic defense we're getting? That is very helpful against Alan. Because he does almost all magic damage. So when we're fighting Alan, we'll have a rune shield in our left hand. We're not going to use it. It's just going to be there. We're going to fight like normal. Because the secret dagger is good one-handed. But just by merely having it equipped, it gives that magic bo uh, damage bonus. So unequip our soul remains. So we're not even going to need the thief ring. That's for sure. Um, but nothing else will really help us, so we could probably just put the regenerator ring on. We'll keep the thief ring on for now, although it doesn't really matter. But yeah, we're pretty much got everything we need. We'll spice up in case we want to use Sol Ray, because you could use a magic only strategy for this. I think this is one fight in particular where the secret dagger is much better, and the strategy is not that hard to do, as I'll hopefully show off. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do, give the elevator a second, come in here. Alright, so we're going to walk over here, and we're going to wait. Because Alet will eventually turn his back and give us a free opening. Now, I remember when we fought Penetrator, I explained the combo mechanic where hyper armor and how you wait for they're not attacking. The same thing works on Alet, but there's a little more risk to it. Because Alet has a special dodge move that he can do to get out of combos... 
And if he does that in a certain position, it can put you into a very dangerous spot. So you can combo him, but be a little more reserved with how you do it. So I'm going to put the regenerator ring on just for the hell of it. All right, so then we're going to Black Turpentine. Then we're going to mash the R1 button behind him. And see, he did that dodge attack behind us. That's very dangerous because he did that combo attack. So the general strategy of fighting Alan is to stay away from him because sometimes he'll do this, which gives you a free hit and potentially a combo. So yeah, walk away from him. You can be locked on. Locking on is good. The second he does that, run towards him, run behind him, attack him. And if he's getting comboed, you can be free to attack, but be careful. Or he'll also do that attack, which is very easy to dodge. It has a big tell. Do it again. Roll into him. I'm going to buff and stay away from him. That's his soul drain attack. Doesn't have that much range. Dash attack. Roll into it. It's very simple timing. Get behind him. Always get behind Alan before you attack. Because that. He can do instant counterattacks, which are much more likely to hit you when you're in front of him. If I was in front of him, I'd probably be dead right now. He does that. Go behind him. Always go behind him and attack. If he does his dash move like that, get away. That combo attack he just did is why you want to stay away from him. That combo attack is extremely dangerous if you're in front of him or anywhere near him. When he's walking like that, healing in front of him is typically perfectly fine, believe it or not. All right, so he's doing his God's Wrath again. Get behind him. So the main thing right now is we want to buff. Our Secret Dagger is not that good against Alan if we're not buffed with our Black Turpentine. So I'm going to use this opportunity to run away, run far away, then Black Turpentine, because it has a lot of range on it. Just make sure you run very far away. All right, dash attack. Oh, he canceled it. Yeah, Alec can animation cancel. He's not really supposed to do that. He doesn't do it often, but when he does do it, be ready for it, because it's very dangerous. Roll to the side of that. Back away, back away. Wait for the dash. Roll into it. Get behind. Attack. And he's letting me combo him. Sometimes he just lets you. Back away. And just keep backing away. Dash attack. All right, so we don't have our black turpentine on, so I'm just going to run away. Not even going to bother attacking. All right, dash attack again. I'm behind him, so I'll turpentine. That's very dangerous. Probably don't want to do that. All right, I'm not going to worry about healing because I'm a little... Yeah, there we go. Because we do have the regenerator ring equipped right now. And it is redoing its thing. Roll to the side. Back away. God's Wrath. Get some hits in. Be, being safe. Combo attack is nothing to worry about if you're if you're at a safe distance. Roll into it. No turpentine, but I'll attack him anyway. Getting that combo. So we want to put our Delight Turpentine back on. That should be a safe time to do it. It's a little dangerous doing that, because you do want to be far away from it at all times. If you want to be 100% safe, wait for a God's Wrath like that and run the uh, run away. That's if you want to be 100% safe and never even risk any sort of melee attacks. Because that's basically how you want to fight Alan. You never want to risk being close to him. When you're far away, he can only do God's Wrath and Dash Attack. And both of those attacks are very easy to deal with. That's pretty much how you fight Alan and simplify the fight. See, like right there, he's going to do this or he's going to dash. And that's all there is to that. So I'm going to use this opportunity to get our Black Turpentine back. That's the safest time to do that. Dash attack, roll into it, punish him. He lets me combo, so I'm going to take it. Be a little careful with your combo, though, but yeah, you can get a lot of damage in if he decides to do that. Roll in, behind, attack. Just stay away. Dash attack, roll in. My turpentine ran out, but it doesn't matter because he's dead. And yeah, Alan is not as hard as he may seem. Not too bad. So the only thing left is Real King Alan, the easiest boss in the game. So we have just beat Demon Souls at Soul Level 1. Not too hard. And I think that was Deathless, by the way. So yay, hooray for me. <laughs> So, before we go to New Game Plus, again, this guide was not intended for New Game Plus, but just as a reminder, 
repair all your stuff, be prepared, because you can't level up or do anything really until you beat 1-1 of New Game Plus. So just make sure you have everything you need. Now, this character is not intended for New Game Plus, but it is something to keep in mind. So the thing, a smart thing to do would be to get rid of your Rune Shield, because you're not going to need that for 1-1. Uh, get your Buckler back. Deposit things you don't need, like that Rune Shield. Um, get, that, get rid of that Regenerator Ring. Put your Thief Ring back on. Just make sure you have everything you want. Soul Remains. Because you are going to have to... New Game Plus is going to be a little bit harder. But yeah, we'll finish the playthrough. I'll make it official. So level one, new game plus. Uh, so level one, no deaths, not too bad. Hope I explained and showed everything you need to do to beat this game at soul level one. And for things I didn't show, because either I didn't need to do it or for the sake of time, I hope I explained it and you have a good idea, like if you wanted to use a bow or if you wanted to use magic. Again, I'm going to upload this on YouTube. So if you have any questions, that would be a good place to ask. But yeah, it was a pretty good playthrough of Soul Level 1 Demon Souls. So now we're just going to make it official and end the playthrough. Not too shabby. Yeah, Secret Dagger is probably your best bet at Soul Level 1. It's a great weapon. And there we go. Really nothing to say about this boss. Get behind him, hit the R1 button. You have seen for yourself. And there we go. Yeah, you can just stun lock him even without stamina. Not too bad. <laughs> this is kind of stupid looking. Love it. <laughs> We got him! Alright, that's the game. We did it. So level one, playthrough. Pretty easy. And yeah, if you were planning on doing New Game Plus, definitely make sure to take the, uh, the, uh, this is the Demon Br Soul Brant. And also, if you wanted to, you can actually Nexual Binding out of here right now. So that way you don't have to go to New Game Plus yet. If you wanted to do anything else, that actually would be a good idea to do that. But yeah, that is Demon Souls Soul Level 1. Not too bad. sensed a new and powerful demon by its side. And before long, the world will be engulfed by the deep fog. Bring more soul. 